Hello and welcome, everyone. Welcome to... Oh, man, I don't even remember. Like, we're, we're nearing episode 150, so... Uh, I don't know, maybe we're 148, 149, I think I put it in the title, but welcome everyone, welcome to Dev Chatter. Uh, we are going to have fun uh, this, what is today, Monday, and uh, do some JavaScript coding today. We're going to do a kata. Uh, by this point, I think I've, I've delayed long enough mentioning that there is a person up, in, up, up there in the corner with us. Um, you can't see him waving because he waved off screen. Oh, did you practically I? got a wave over your face there. There you go. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he's in chat as well. Let me make sure that you can uh, hang on. There we go. Uh, so now you'll be able to post links and stuff in the chat. Uh, yes, welcome, everyone. Glad to see you all there. <laughs> uh, so we have Ed here. And uh, I realize I didn't put this under your name. So uh, put the name. So... Shout out your uh, the name. So, introduce yourself. Your name is Ed, but you can get the rest yourself. And tell everybody about your Twitch stream too. Uh, yeah. So my name's Ed Charbonneau. I'm a Microsoft MVP, and I have a Twitch stream uh, that you can find by my name. Um, I'll post it in the chat here in a minute. But on that show, I talk about Blazor, the brand new framework that uh, Microsoft is working on that lets you run. Uh, web applications, JavaScript free. So it's kind of ironic what we're talking about today, but uh, that's what my stream is about, is uh, Blazor and uh, what is also called Razor Components, which will be released in ASP.NET 3.0. So uh, I air every Friday at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. If you want to learn about JavaScript free web development, uh, come check me out on Fridays. Sounds good. Uh, what, what was the, uh, it's, uh, it's your, it's your name. Okay. So you stream yep. under your name. I know you have a name yeah. for it, but let me go ahead and do that. Yeah. The title of the show is Blazor State Has Changed. So if any of you That's have done, um, WPF or, uh, Silverlight Programming, you might remember, um, the I property notification chain or I, whatever the heck that fun, uh, update type of um, command was called. So they have a similar command or method that you have to run in Blazor that tells it to update the UI. So it's called state has changed, which is the update command to update the UI in Blazor. So that's what the show is named after. And uh, it's to give everybody updates on the latest and greatest Blazor news. Sounds like fun. Uh... As people on my channel know, uh, Blazor is one of those things that I intend to use at some point <laughs> once it gets further along. Uh, most of the stuff, aside from these one-off katas and things like that that we do here on the stream, are usually like long-running projects. And the state has changed implies things will be changing. So And they have quite often. <laughs> yeah. That's some of the stuff that I, I try to cover on the show. So each week I'll grab like community um, projects and talk about those and highlight them so people can find like what others are working on. But I also cover like news things and try to talk about uh, either uh, GitHub issues that are going to affect um, what you're experimenting with. So if there's something that's, you know, kind of aggravating, for example, there was a um, ch there was a an update that broke builds in Visual Studio, so like every maybe other build would just hang. So we we kind of talked about that. So if you're messing around with this stuff and you're like, oh, this thing never builds right, uh, if you sign it, you know, if you watch the show, you get get tipped off to these little quirks and bugs that are in betas, uh, yeah. such as Blazor. <laughs> No, I love it. Uh, so I actually do like messing around with like the new tech. So uh, I don't know if I ever told you this, but uh, when when ASP.NET MVC came around, uh, the, the um, I actually released websites into production on the early releases. So I was How running. How dare you? Yeah. So the trick is that I worked for a company where literally half the dev team were either ASP.NET MVPs or ASP insiders. <laughs> and so we were kind of like, yeah, we're all on board with this. Let's just, like, let's just do it. It was uh, in, like an internal thing. And so we're like, yeah, okay. Like most of the users are going to be us. So we're good if, you know, it went live, got, got a lot of use. It was very fun. Uh, but, you know, we can make those kinds of decisions, right? And so like yeah. your stuff, you're not probably putting production stuff on Blazor. 
So no, you probably shouldn't. Um, it's in. <laughs> I would say it's more of an alpha than a beta. Um, it's only like seven months, eight months old, something like that. It's on version zero point seven right now. Uh, exactly. So that should at least tip you off that uh, things are going to change. APIs are going to change. It may not even be called Blazor at the end of the day. I hope it is. It's a cool name, I think. Yeah. Um, but the official like first release will be a server-side version of it called Razor Components. So you can already see they've changed the name once. Yes. Um, I don't doubt that they may do it again. So it, the, here's here's the problem that I actually have with Blazor right now. I actually so I I also like the name, but I have one major problem with the name. Since I started looking into Blazor a long time ago, I started getting like the Google like ads for like men's blazers <laughs> and things, and I'm like, no, no, I do, I'm not. I don't need to buy a blazer. <laughs> like that's not how yeah. you spell that even. <laughs> I had to tell my phone to quit giving me articles about the the uh, formal wear because it kept posting in my Google news feed. Yeah. Like, it gets confused. The internet's like, oh, yeah, you want this? No, I don't. Okay, so um, I think that's a pretty good uh, intro. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thanks for those uh, Twitch Prime subs, uh, Kevin and uh, Dot Kami. Uh, much appreciated. And uh, we want to get started doing some kata here on the channel. So I want to make sure that we direct towards that. So, Ed, you were suggesting we do this kata. Uh, I believe that this is just straight up your kata, right? Or maybe it's someone yeah. else's. So Tell us about it. This is a fun project in general. So I've done this in many languages. Uh, the idea is you're going to do a poker scoring algorithm. So you're going to write the code necessary to score a hand, not the whole game, just a hand, of uh, five-card poker. And the reason I choose five-card poker is, for one, uh, it's something that you can physically get a deck of cards out if you're somebody that learns with like real world objects and you can lay those cards out in front of you and work through problems. Uh, number two is a lot of the, the things that you have to write uh, to finish this kata, you'll notice overlap things that happen in the real world. So there'll be um, functions that you have to write to do filtering and sorting and finding certain patterns within an array of data. And these really mimic like real world problems that we run into on a daily basis when we're writing production code. So it turns out to be a really uh, easy uh, project to relate to real world things. And I think that gives people a good idea of um, how to learn new languages or learn new types of programming and apply it to something. Yeah. No, I, I think it's I think it's a good one. Uh, one of the other things I like about it is even people that so a lot of people know cards. A lot of people don't necessarily know the rules of poker, um, but at the same time, uh, I believe you have this set up with some tests already made. So absolutely, you don't even need to know them that well going in because the test probably defines which hands are supposed to win over which other ones already. Uh, for the most part. Um, okay. So the the unit tests are already built in. Uh, mm -hmm. So you, I, I can see you're showing uh, these the Stack Blitz uh, yep. app on your screen. So this is just a little app that I wrote um, with React. So this is a React application. We're not going to learn React today. We don't really need to know anything about React. Uh, but I wrote the little framework that sits around this in React, and I it's just like a visual visualization of a unit test, basically, because there weren't enough unit test frameworks in JavaScript I had to create my own, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, <laughs> so, makes sense. Uh, the, the idea is that on your right-hand side of the screen, uh, you have what is the test data. So this is your test data, and at the bottom of that test data is the current status of whether it's a passing or failing test. And what we're going to do is write code that is going to pass that test. And when we do, it'll collapse the data that's on top so that that data grid uh, will actually go away and that uh, red box will turn green and it'll tell us we passed that test. Oh, okay, that makes sense. It'll also give us an output on the very bottom. It says output was there. So if we have a failing test, it'll tell us what the output of the the function that we're testing actually was. So we I assume right now we have no output. So that's why it's saying nothing. 
Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, it's also worth mentioning that that is a Kendo UI grid. So that is Kendo React. So the company I work for, Telerik, makes these wonderful UI components. Uh, so that thing can like sort. Kendo's free, stuff. right? Uh, actually, no, it is not. It it's isn't. a commercial mm. product. Um, there are some free bits for jQuery, but this is React. So this oh, okay. is a commercial. Um, if you're using it for a, a scenario like this, where you're just kind of tinkering around, uh, you're, you don't really need a license for that. But if you're using it in production, then yes, it's Makes a licensed sense. product. So if you want to mess around with it and do a kata, cool. Yeah, go for it. Absolutely. Learn about it. If you like it and love it and want to use it at work, then uh, check out the licenses. There's a 30-day free trial, so you can try it with teammates and stuff at work. So um, it's something that I used over my entire career, and uh, I, I enjoyed it so much I joined the company, right? Why not? Nice. That's pretty good. Okay, so the thing that I did uh, to get started, because we actually have this running over in, uh, well, I don't know I don't know that we know that it's running, but we have it over here as well. And uh, I clicked this little download project link here, and that mm -hmm. downloaded all the source code from StackBlitz that's in this project. Yeah, that... so, sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah, go ahead. If you, if you want to kind of show folks that in StackBlitz, if they haven't, tried StackBlitz before. This is like an interactive um, kind of like IDE environment. It's pretty much a clone. It's VS Code, basically. Yes, yeah, it is VS Code, but the way they have it set up, um, you can actually do everything right here within uh, this window. Um, if you uh, minimize that console on the mm -hmm. right-hand side, and in the uh, git hand rank uh, function there, uh, in the, yep. yep line 20, yep. go ahead and type high card after the word return. Okay. Uh, the string high card, actually. Yeah, there we go. You knew what I meant? Yep, I knew what you meant. And instantly on the right-hand side. Immediately that, passes, yes. That, that, that unit test passed. So this is the setup that you have within StackBlitz, and uh, we're, <clears throat> uh, you're downloading it and putting it in Visual Studio Code so we can do some live share. That, that is just a setup because then uh, you and I can be live shared in using this. But if anyone just wants to follow along, they can go and do this directly from that URL that I posted there in the chat window, which is Absolutely. this one here. And I will re repaste it there for anyone that wants to uh, follow along or try on your own. Uh, obviously, since we're going to be discussing and going through this, uh, if you just race through it, you might get done faster than we do. But I wanted to make <laughs> sure everyone sees that. You may take a different path at getting through it than we are, too. So we're going to try to do this with some functional programming ideas. Uh, so, Ed, you were, you were telling me how to get this thing running. Uh, so... Yeah. Uh, so we've got it downloaded. Go ahead. and We've done npm install. Yeah, so it would be, uh, well, here, I'll hit up. So this is the only command we've typed in so far since going into the base of this project. So try uh, npm start and see if we get an error. I think we will, because there's one module that's missing from... That it doesn't automatically a, get? Yeah, I think it's a uh, child dependency. So, uh, let's see, what is... Would you I like think... to add default? Uh, uh, I will say oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, I've run into this one. I don't know what that target browser thing is, uh, but... I assume maybe it can't tell which browser I want it to load? Yeah, I'm not yeah, sure I why know, that especially matter, Isn't that but... awesome? <laughs> we were laughing our butt off that whole time. We were like, uh, "Why do you think the stream started late?" There was a mild amount of npm bashing going on there because we were like, "Are you kidding me?" So it was yes. Funny. So that was that was the error I expected. Okay. Just go yeah. ahead and run that first command there. So uh, yeah, you can terminate. Yep. Yeah. NPM install node dash sass. Yeah, I think that's a child dependency, so it's uh, it's not installed by default for some reason. NPM stopped doing that a couple a uh, couple versions ago. I don't keep up with the latest and greatest NPM things, so I'm not sure why that change was made. Uh, but this is the result of it. So. <laughs>
But what's nice about this um, setup is we'll get the exact same experience that is on Stack Blitz. Okay, should be loading here. And then hopefully it'll do the nice uh, automatically reloading this every time too. It will. Is it still going? Um, I see a blank page. Yeah, that's so. what I see too. There we go. There we hey. go. All right. One I last apparently refresh. Just Got a refresh. It. Yeah. Okay. So we're cooking with fire now. Now All we right. can. We Let's can, go in uh, here. Do the same thing we did a moment ago, where I go down and I just have it return high card. High card. And that automatically reloaded and passed. I didn't have to do anything. So awesome. Good. We we are we are definitely working now. Uh, so we've gotten a test to pass already. And we used a literal, we did not use a variable. Okay, so let's read those instructions that you said at the beginning, uh, because you were defining we were going to try to use uh, some special rules. I'm going to turn on word rep. So we're going to look at functional programming. And we're going to try to complete uh, these two functions. We have two functions in front of us. Mm -hmm. We have get high card, and we have get hand rank. So we're going to get the highest card from the set of data and return that high card uh, in all of its values. So this isn't, we're not returning the highest value. We're not looking for um, the ace. We're looking for the actual card uh, that has all of the properties and values with it. Uh, so that's, that, that actually needs to be said because a lot of people when they try to um, do this first test, uh, they use a very quick and easy method to get that uh, highest value which is mm -hmm. a lot easier than getting the actual highest object out of that set. Um, and then we also have a function called get hand rank. Uh, so this also takes that uh, array of cards and we are going to um, determine what the highest rank is in the hand of cards. So for example, if we have uh, two pair, we want to return two pair. If we have something higher, we want to return that. So that's going to be the, the main scoring function for our hand. Got it. So this needs to return back the set. Is there a define uh, a definition somewhere of what those different types are? Like uh, what the there, different hand ranks are? Um, the best thing to do might be to, to grab it off of uh, Google. Um, there is test data. It might be a little bit... Uh, Okay. To dig through all that data, but it um, it is visualized in the um, in the uh, the actual website. If you pull that up as well, each test shows mm -hmm. uh, some test data that we're trying to determine um, if it's so. If you go down to number nine there, the pair. You can see there's mm -hmm. uh, data that represents a pair. Got so it. So this tens. was the hand, and we wanted to get back mm -hmm. the test. And those are those are sortable. It won't sort the test data itself, but it'll uh, sort the visual representation of it. So if you click on the word "suit" up at the top, uh, you can actually sort the data that you're testing. Oh, okay. Um, so there we go. The values. Well, something may be off with the. No, there it goes. Yep, you're sorting by value only now, so you can see there's mm -hmm. a 10 of spades and a 10 of clubs. So we have two pair in there. Yep. Makes sense. It also has the definition there in, in text format. It says two cards of the same value at the bottom in red. Yeah. There we go. So that kind of gives you an idea. Um, if that's not enough for you, though, I, I was just Googling it. They have a lot of good uh, visual um, representations of it and, online. And I like these co these two-letter codes for all the cards. That's quite nice. The uh, zero obviously representing a 10, and then probably J, Q, and K for Jack, Queen, King, and I'm betting an A for Ace. Yeah. Yeah, those are there if we need them. Um, we actually... I like it. Uh, we use those as well to get the images for that test data visualization. So it's got all the image data in there too. Okay, so what is this second test that we need to make pass? So we made our first test pass. We did that without having to do anything. We just put in high card, which that works. Yep. 
His second test. The high card is is your default rank, right? So if you if you're mm -hmm. familiar with poker in any way, then if you if you don't have any kind of pairs or anything else, the high card is going to be the the least valuable hand possible. So that's our default. But you also so always that, have a high card. Yes. So yep. that's that's how that ended up being our first test and why it was so easy to do. So this next test, we <laughs> want to uh, return back. So this one is testing the get high card method. And we want to make sure that we return back this king of hearts. Right? Correct. Yep. Uh, it wants us to return the full card object. Mm-hmm. Uh, not just the card itself. So essentially then we can either just return back, you know, the card by number because we might know what, what the base ordering is, right? Like if I just refresh this page and go, okay, well, it was zero, one, two, probably, right? I could probably cheat and just do this almost, right? You could. To um, make I test one have, pass. I don't have multiple tests in there to ah. kind of... Uh, avoid that but you could do that um ah, i returned back the four i apparently can't count but <laughs> i could i could do that it would make it pass and that would be like the most cheating way to just be like hey yeah the test passed right and i made it pass uh, but then we could go back and say okay but how could we really get this value uh and we could do something like uh filtering it or something like that right right in the in the real world, if we were writing serious unit tests, we'd probably have multiple to make sure that we're <laughs> not fudging the system. But you know, this is just a cotta for fun. So yeah, let's. Uh, no, hey. that that I've I've had people in workshops do that though. They're like, no, oh, no, no, no. So if, you, if you're doing if you're doing a, a back and forth like you know pairing kind of thing where you're doing the like test driven development like you mean it, one of the mm -hmm. goals is do the test as simply as possible and then refactor. You know, like make it pass as simply as possible. Uh, and then pass it, you know, give it to the other person, then, you know, like make a new test, the other person, they'll refactor, you know, like refactor when it needs it. But for now that does make it pass, right? Yeah, yeah it does. And then it leads you to building the next test that more defines that this is cheating, right? It's make right. the test that says, no, that was wrong. Uh, but anyway, let's, let's do this the right way. So we want to select this somehow. So, uh, I can think of a couple of ways we could do it. We could filter. Uh, is there a, uh, does JavaScript have a, an equivalent of single like, uh, C sharp does, you know, if they have that, I don't, I don't know sure. of one. So we could do this. We could, we could grab this, right? Uh, what are the values on these? So one thing that I, I'd like to do with these, uh, is we called it value. Least at least early on, I like to um, to kind of do it imperatively oh. without functional programming okay. for those that don't know what the heck we're doing with these arrow functions and all sure. that good yeah. stuff. No, it's so cool. how would you possibly do this imperatively? Think about that maybe. Uh, well, I could just do this. I could like do a for each loop over the cards, right? Okay. And, uh, it's not exactly, uh, you know, I mean, I could do like a full for loop, right? Instead of doing this. But I think most people are used to a for each loop of some kind. What if, and we um... could grab the maximum value and say, uh, whoops, let uh, high card. There you go. That's you... where I was. That's where my yeah. thought was heading. So we, we set up a placeholder, right? Sure, and maybe I set this equal to the first card or something like that, right? Exactly. We could do that, say it's the first card, and then I'm not going to skip it here. Um, so we'll just have to say um, if, whoops. So if I were doing it this way, I would say if card dot value greater than, you know, high card dot value, and I'm assuming that's what our value is. Uh, mm -hmm. Then high card equals card, and then I could return high card, and that's the like, you know, simple approach. Right. Uh, what if cards is null? I don't think we're doing defensive programming here, Will. <laughs> yeah, uh, we we always expect to have cards. So. Okay, so let's take a look and see if that still passes. I think it does. Looks like it does. 
Okay, so that does work, and we can get away with that. The problem is, you told us to do this using functional programming in these instructions here. Right. So this is a good example, though, because this is something that people are going to be very familiar with. So especially if they uh, come from a background where some of these operators that we're going to use haven't existed yet. Um, but if you look at this now, um, there is actually an operator inside of uh, JavaScript, especially with ECMAScript 6, that does exactly what this function is doing. It's already built in. Um, it's a function that looks at an array of, um, of objects, and it sets up a placeholder value. And each time it iterates through a collection, it replaces that placeholder value. Does that function ring a bell? Nope. Which, nope. which one are you talking okay. about? Uh, Maybe I so know. In, uh, we also have the same function in uh, C Sharp. So uh, it's built into link. And uh, let's uh, let's Which start. Which one in Link are you talking about? Uh, so to give to give away the answer, um, mm -hmm. in in JavaScript this is reduce. In C sharp it's aggregate. Oh okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that function actually does exactly what we're doing here, and there's a way that we can make this possibly a little more apparent. Um, so for one thing, we have, can you see if I highlight? Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so, we, get, we get that. Uh, there's a function that actually does this. It'll set up a placeholder. So we have our placeholder here. And every time we loop, we're doing something to this value. We're resetting this value. Uh, one thing that we can do to make this a little more simple um, is we could actually refactor this if statement out. So we could use a tenery operator here. Funny enough, I was going to show you where I use aggregate in my in my chat bot. I was pulling it up on the screen there, and then I remembered I, I yanked that code out at one point not that long ago because I was like, oh, actually, because everyone asked me what I was doing, and I was like, <laughs> after I answered it like the third time, I was like, okay, I'll just remove this. So, no, it's not in there. Oh, so, uh, so yeah, you're not me, a uh, fan of tenery. <laughs> Not a fan of tenery operators, or people aren't in general. No, uh, people people were asking questions a lot in the stream, so I was like, okay, we'll we'll pull that. But yeah, this is specifically we're trying to do this functionally. So let's go. Let let's reduce. So I'm assuming cards dot reduce. Yep, cards dot reduce. So we can do that. And then um, we do a callback function. So there's going to be two parameters on reduce that takes in previous and current value. Mm -hmm. so, Which is exactly what we're doing in the code below. Yeah. So previous value is the high card. Current value is the, the card in and, this case. Uh, we, can, we can actually write those a uh, little more verbose yeah. just so people understand what, um, what it is that we're putting in there. So high card, we can continue with the same um, verbiage, really. I was just going to say current, but I could say current card. Yeah, that'll work. High too. card, current card. That just gives folks a an idea yeah. of what's happening internally inside this reduce function because we've already written a reduce function below. So this is actually a reduce function. Yeah, I'm trying to get the IntelliSense back so everybody, at least on my end, can see it. Your end can't see it, but <laughs> like you can't see the IntelliSense, but they hopefully can. Uh, so essentially, sure. <clears throat> this gets us this. Which one do I want? So when, when uh, this function is called, it's going to have this high card, which, as you can see here, we have the same kind of thing. This is our placeholder. Uh, so the function internally has the same placeholder. Mm -hmm. And then it also takes um, a parameter, which is the current item that we're iterating on. So it has an internal for each or a while loop that does the same type of iteration. So what we need to do is take this function and place it inside of uh, this next uh, piece of code here, this, yep. this uh, next expression. And this is why I said a tenery operator. Um, if we were to refactor this out, it makes it a little more clear as to what oh. exactly should go here. Yeah, it's funny. Good, good call, Pat. I don't know what happened there. Sorry, I keep going. 
So we could we could write this out essentially as um, we could say the if the current card if the value is uh, greater than the high card value, then we're going to do what? We return the, the uh, current card. And if it's not, then we'll return the high card again. So we'll just keep that value, which is exactly the same thing as what's happening in this if statement. Yep. We are returning either the current high card, or the, either the previous high card or the current card as the high card. Correct. And we could uh, we could temporarily write that uh, the way that we had it before, but I think this works well enough. Usually when yeah. I do these, I, I do this. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you think I'm insane for that. No, not at all. Okay. And then you can so go these ahead. These can and... go away. And. Yep. And I'm assuming reduce returns back the high card value. Correct. So, so we can. I could yep. just return, or I could temporarily store a variable, but I see no need. Okay. So cool. We got that right. Yep. So now we have this nice little function that does exactly what that what six eight lines of code did. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yep. Uh, do we check our unit test to pass to see if it passed? Uh, I'm not on. I don't have my my Skype window open. Oh, I can't see your boo, browser. Boo. So we've got a we stray a comma, somewhere. comma somewhere. Apparently. Is it this one? That shouldn't be a problem, right? No, is it being that picky? Uh, cards reduce, high card, current card. Maybe it doesn't like my new lining. You need, um... yeah, didn't like my new lining. Oh, okay. What a punk! All right. All right. So we've got that though, and it passed. Yeah, we're good. Okay, we, that we passes. still pass. So I'm going to do a little uh, further refactoring. Okay. So since we have just a single line of code, right? It's just one line, really. We don't need all the ceremony around it. So what we can do with this is we can actually take away. Um, this we could get here. rid of that and just make it. We don't, we don't need function. So yep. we take function away. We don't need the curly braces because all we're doing is returning a value. A single line, yep. And we don't need the return statement because that's implicit now. Yep, and which means we can get rid of these as well. And get rid of that trailing curly uh, or parenthesis, and there we go. So yeah. now we, we've reduced that all the way down to one line. We've, we've wet that all down to one line? Uh, we reduced it all all the way down. Refactored it out to yeah, a single a, line. Of code. Re it was a jo it was a reduced joke. We called reduce. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and you said <laughs> we've you. reduced it all down to one line. I, I missed <clears throat> the pun. <laughs> oh so, uh, yeah, sorry everyone. You have a one year old, right? Your 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 dad jokes are getting pretty strong. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so gotta, gotta practice. Gotta practice. So now we have a single expression that does exactly what we need it to do. Gets the high card. Yep, makes sense. So we're going to do a lot more of this now. So for anyone that's con confused here, essentially, uh, anytime you do a uh, an equals greater than like this and just make a an arrow, this is kind of like a lambda expression or something like that, um, that uh, you might be used to in C sharp or obviously now they're in JavaScript as well. This basically says, hey, this is going to be a function. And the left-hand side of it is the parameters. The right-hand side is the implementation. In this case, we have a single-line implementation. And it happens that in that, we just call something that needs its own method declared. So we defined another method. These are the parameters. And this is the code that gets executed on that one line. So boom, one, one quick little line. Works nicely. And so we nice. know it works because it's a test. And what's nice is we showed what the reduce function does internally. It's pretty pretty much that simple. There's not a whole lot more going on inside of that reduce function other than maybe some guards and things like that. Um, I believe it uses a, 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 a while do type of uh, function instead of an if then, but 
or a for each, I mean. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, it does exactly what we had coded out to begin with. So okay. let's take a look next, at the next test. Yeah, we have hand rank, and this is going to be a lot more involved because we're, we're doing multiple things within this function. It's not just a one-time deal. OK, so hand rank uh, is currently returning back high card. Obviously, for a pair, we should be indicating that's a pair. And you're saying we're doing more than one thing. So I'm assuming for this that we need to choose which pair we should be displaying. Is We need to put that back in some way also? Um, so we, we actually don't need to return all of that. We're just going to return what the hand rank is. The pair for now. OK. Yep, so we're going to return the word pair. Um, we don't necessarily need to do these in order of um, unit tests either. We we have multiple tests that we could choose from if we wanted to choose something easier to go with first. Um, I'm up for that as well. Like Royal Flush. Yeah, Flush, yeah. Royal Flush, uh, those things tend to be a little bit easier. Um, for some reason, the, the numbering on this sure. is backwards. So we did 1 and 1B. One yeah, we and can it do jumps flush. to nine. I'm not sure how those flush. got out of order. Here we go. But let's check out uh, flush and royal flush first. So we need to say it's a king high flush, basically, would be what this would be in terms of like a poker answer for this, right? So all car, if we look at the bottom, all five cards are the same suit, uh, but not in sequence. Yep. So we could do something. So first off, I'm, 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 I have no problem with in a test if we start off by making making it so our program thinks the royal flush is just a flush, and then fixing the royal flush later. Right. I'm, so we can we can start really simple. Yeah. Let's let's just make the flush work, and then we'll make sure we distinguish flush and royal flush afterwards. Okay. Sounds so, good. Uh, I assume on hand rank, we want to check what's in our cards. So the simple way to do this, uh, if we wanted to do it that way, would be to do something like, um, uh, we'll create a Boolean and we'll call it all same suit. Um, okay. Uh, I like where you're headed. We'll assume they're all the same suit until we get one that isn't. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to think of what's the naive way to do this, right? <laughs> I've seen all sorts of fun things doing workshops on this. Um, I saw one gentleman turn everything in the data set into a giant string and then search through the string. <laughs> uh, we won't sure. do that. Um, uh, you, you could. Uh, but there's, there's a lot of... Uh, there's a, when I do the workshop, this is the way I say it. There's a lot of ways to solve these problems. There are no incorrect ways to solve these problems unless they don't pass the unit test. If they pass the unit test, you've coded it correctly. Yeah. Um, we can look at things like um, uh, better craftsmanship and uh, efficiency and those things after the fact. But the first thing we need to do is make sure that the code passes the test, right? So we're going to say uh, if... Uh, whoops, I called it element. I'll rename that in a second. <laughs> and by that I mean I didn't rename it. Uh, suit uh, does not equal suit, then uh, all same suit equals false. And we'll say if, so this is really naive right here, all same suit. And I'm going to un. Check that little push pin so I stop jumping to you. If all same suit return, what did we say? Pair? Do I yeah. need to return anything else other than that, you think? We'll find out. Or flush, I mean. Flush. Yeah, that's right. We ended up with uh, flush. Okay, first. so there we go. All five cards are of the same suit, but not in the same sequence. And the other ones still pass as well? Cool. My high card stuff still passes, and we have the flush. All right. So... We've we've got some code. It's it's definitely code. <laughs> it could be a lot simpler though. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> than this, I was I like, know, what's I the most naive approach? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. This the is the most naive approach. Yeah, that is, is this, a simple way. I looped through the whole set and I said, hey, did I get one that that changed suits? And and yeah. again, my my devil's advocate of uh, 
of functional programming will say, uh, is there a way we could do this with a built-in function? Because we're, we're doing something that's pretty uh, common, right? This isn't sure. so uncommon that we need a, a specialized... I could do algorithm. something like this. Uh, so I so the first simplification that I would say here is I'm really checking to see if all of these have a same value. So they would be all the same suit if... Uh, and let me just write that. You, you actually said out loud the keyword that I'm yeah, looking for. Yeah, I, I know. It's actually in the variable as well. But is it is it every? Is every. That what they have? Yep. You got it. Yeah, I got to I called it all there for a second. I'm a C sharp dev. I apologize. That's my main yep. language, but I do a lot of JavaScript <laughs> too. So, uh, Will Will's all Forgive over me. the chat room. Seeing every every. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good, good, good job, Will. Good job. <laughs> all right. So card dot uh, suit. So we we need um, we need something to compare it to. Yeah, uh, I could just say uh, equals. Uh, whoops, triple equals cards zero. Dot Sounds suit. good to me. Not ideal, but we can say everyone matches whatever the first one is, right? That sounds good enough to me. And then that's basically what that check is there. Right. Let's see if we got a. Uh... See if the code Passing still works. Here. Flush. Uh, appears to still be passing. I'll refresh just in case. But yeah, it is. All right. So let's uh, let's do some additional uh, refactoring here. So I'll, I'll take the wheel for a moment, and let's say instead of setting up state, so we we don't want state. We're we're gonna get rid of this. Yep. Um, <clears throat> we can just put actually, that inside the if. Actually, we'll we'll move it outside completely. And oh, yeah. we can say const. Um, I'm going to use a different terminology here. I'm going to say has um, mm -hmm. flush. Yeah, has flush because a uh, a flush and a straight flush and a royal flush would all have a flush. So exactly. So we're <laughs> on the same page. Yeah. Um, and then it's going to take a. Uh, this is going to be a function that takes a hand of cards. Yep. And it returns. And I'm going to copy and paste. I'm just going to grab this guy here and move this up here. So now yep. we don't need any of that code. Here's the interesting part. So is how do we want to handle this? We, we could write uh, this the same way we did before and do a uh, has flush and do one of these, for example. I like it. Is, is one way that we could do it. And, and right now that's an okay way to... To take care of it, essentially just doing a ternary operator. For anyone that doesn't know what a ternary operator, so we're not confusing you here, uh, I think everybody gets what the every's doing. Uh, if you don't, uh, this is the same as an all in C sharp. Uh, essentially, this says, "Hey, I'm going to over here. I'm going to put in some kind of a condition that applies to every item in this collection, and we're saying that the suit has to equal the the suit of the first card. If if all of your cards have the same suit effectively, you have a flush. And then down here we said, uh, based on this conditional, if it's true, you return back the first value. If it's not, if it's false, return back the second value. And that's except all we there, did there. Except you have a syntax error. I have a syntax error. Where do I have a syntax so error? So the way you have this written, oh. you might as well have said... Yeah, false. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I meant to do has flush uh, cards. So I pointed that out because I actually did the same um, mistake in uh, one of the articles that I wrote. <laughs> Somebody had to point that out to me that I actually didn't call the function. I was just it, returning. It's, it's really easy to do. But the, but the, the nice thing is existed. we have unit tests. So if I did that, here, let's let's do it, actually. So it, it'll, it'll return. It High fails. card should fail. Yep. Because it's actually going to return true, I believe, right? Did flush pass? Uh, where's flush? Did it sort it to the bottom or something? Oh, yeah, there we go. So flush uh, pass, because we have a function named has flush, it turns yeah. true. Which means that it made them all do that. Yeah, I wanted to point that out because somebody pointed it out to me, and it was like, oh, yep. thank you, because that's no, going to help right. me somewhere else along the line. We still have the high card. We still have the flush. Okay, so that's good. good. Um, now, there, there's something else I want to look at here, and we're talking about clean code and things like that. That's what I like about functional programming is it makes these things nice and clean. Uh, we don't have any variables, right? 
we've got two constants that are just functions that we can call. It, it, it's why uh, I love that JavaScript and C Sharp both took this direction of adding in functional programming bits into that, like the the more of this kind of concept. Absolutely. So there, there's something else we could do here. Um, there's another option. I just want to point it out. I like the way we're going with the ternary operator or ternary. How, how do you pronounce ternary. that? Ternary. All right, we'll go with that. Yep. We could also do something called return early. So we could say, uh, if this has a flush, then return flush. So it'd be something like this. We could say flush, um, return flush. And we could keep adding these. Wait. As much as we'd like. Wait, uh, why do you have return? I don't want return, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Got ahead of myself there. Uh, uh, so we could say, uh, sorry, that should be an if. OK, this makes sense now. Uh, yes. We could say if it has. So it's essentially making guard clauses flush. for it. Yeah, we could continue with this all the way down with every yeah. single type of card that we have. And yes. that would work just fine. Uh, uh, except uh, the weird part is then you have to start saying if if has flush. Uh, then you'd have to do a secondary condition in there for checking to see if that flush is a uh, straight flush or a royal flush, for example. Um, if maybe. You want a special maybe cases. Not. Depends on how you wrote it, but yeah. Yep. We we could actually get around that, but we'll take we'll take the shorter yep. route here. Um, this this actually works very well, and some people understand this better than the mm -hmm. the ternary. Yeah. No, yeah, we're, uh, we're definitely not going to keep the ternary forever because once you get that ternary going multi-levels, people's eyes start glazing over. <laughs> well, it, it actually, I, it doesn't turn out too bad, to be honest. Um, and let, let's go ahead and try to run with it for now. Let's yeah. see what people think. Let's, let's go. Because I want to I point out one more thing here. Because the way we have it now, we can actually say this is, this is one thing. This is one mm -hmm. expression. So, yep. again, we don't need this. And we can say uh, that that just returns whatever this is. Mm -hmm. Yep, totally can. And now we can put that all in one line. And now we have this nice expression. And that should pass the same test. Yep, I will save it. And if we refresh these just to make sure that it really did. Uh, yep, still passing the same tests. So um, <clears throat> let's look at, uh, I know straight is uh, where's this? Hang on. Let me look through these tests again. So we've got flush. Let's do um, the other flushes. Let's do a straight flush. Uh, um, why don't we, why don't we wait, do a, uh, why don't we do a straight before we do a straight flush? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, my mistake. Yeah. Hang on. I'm looking flush. Nine two pair. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's let's see. Straight, number six. Actually, I was looking at Royal Flush, because we have Flush. Let's look at Royal Flush. Uh, I mean, we can. Why, why do you want to do, do that one? Well, we've already got the Flush part. Yeah, but if we write a straight and a Flush, then isn't that uh, just has a straight and a... So it's going to be it's going to be really easy, I think. When Once we do the other ones, yeah. Okay, yeah, we sure, sure. We'll go whatever direction you want to go. We can we can go that way. So let's check out royal flush. So let's let's talk about it for a minute. Um, a royal flush is uh, a straight flush including the ace, king, queen, jack, and they're all the same suit. Yep. So what what do we have now? A flush is all the same suit. Mm -hmm. Yep. We can so, determine that all our cards are the same suit. So now we have to determine that they are of a certain value. Uh, what are those values? Um, if we look at it's uh, look at the the test set there. Yep, we're looking for uh, zero, J, Q, K, and A. Sort the vol value column. Sure, we're looking for all the ones greater than nine. There you go. That sounds easy. Yeah. Uh, all the cards are greater than nine, and they're the same suit, and we're assuming your deck does not have duplicate cards. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if we wanted to do that, uh, do, do we want to do naive approach, or do we want to just go straight for a reasonable I, approach? I think folks can handle a reasonable approach at this point. All right, so we're going to say, has, why don't we say has royal flush? Sounds we, good. 
probably even do, which maybe we can make more general later even. Uh, I'm always up for refactoring. Uh, so I could say cards every card uh, card dot value is greater than nine and the nine is very arbitrary so I almost want to pull I almost want to pull it but uh, that's fine so we'll do that so it has royal flush so okay. then in this we could say uh, if they have a royal flush so has royal flush cards uh, oh and um, so, yeah, we're missing something. I need to put something else there, but I'm going to write it here first and then fix that one. Sure, sure. Royal flush. And then up here, I need to say uh, has flush cards. Uh, and cards and also. dot every that. <clears throat> There you go. Got it. I think that'll work when I refresh this. Maybe. So that Output is was flush. The fancy way of terminology of uh, using terminology for that is function composition. So you took two functions and composed them together to create another function. Yeah, but I didn't get my answer. Cards um, dot every has royal flush, royal flush or has flush. Did it not pass the test? No, I got uh, it. It said it said flush. Let me uh, let me compile it again. <clears throat> uh, greater than or equal to? No, no, no. Greater than? I said greater than nine. Um, I think. Uh, actually, we're we're comparing the wrong value. I don't know how we got this far with this problem because it's. Uh, uh, that actually should be if we look at the data set. Yeah, let's look. It's. It's num value. It's num Not value? Five. Yeah, which mm. I don't know how we fa managed to get the first one to pass. Oh, yep, there we go. <laughs> so we got lucky on that one, apparently. Yeah. So we need to fix that one so as there we well. Go. There we go. That I think should I do got it. all three. Now we should, uh, we should make I sure that doesn't work with your data set in the first one then. So why I ever the... point out, I think I'm the one that typed value to begin with, so I, I will be. accept that problem. <laughs> uh, it, it totally makes sense that it would be value. I'll take, yeah. I'll take blame for that one. But I get it now because you have number sign value up here. Yep. Which I think is what that's supposed to be. Uh, okay, so a straight flush including ace, king, queen. Yep, we got that. Okay, so... So with both of those return early and the... Uh, ternary ways of writing this mm -hmm. uh they they're both very nice in that they let us do oops I put the enter at the wrong place we, we can do this so we can line these up and every time we have a new um function to put here we can just write it yep. where it belongs yep. so this lets us add the code very nice and easily uh, where I've seen folks that want to start off writing all of the code within the hand rank itself so there's like a million if statements <laughs> nested within here with code inside of them. Um, so we could say, um, like, has uh, straight, for example. Mm -hmm. Yep, and we can just continue that pattern all the way down as we complete these. The challenge being, we don't actually have a has straight yet. Right. So let's let's do that. Const has straight equals cards, and we'll say false. And that is our current code, <laughs> mm -hmm. as it is today, working correctly with that new piece added. So. I, w I wouldn't suggest maybe putting them all in there right now. It might no, I was just going to do the one but... like that. But okay, then good. We're, we're going to write straight, but, that, but, the... but that's the way to get it compiling and be like, yeah, look, we, we don't return it, but it works. Yep. So and I'll also note that the uh, ternary operator functions the same way as that return early does. So it's going to short circuit. If it catches royal flush right away, it won't execute the following code that's beyond it. 
So it's not going to keep evaluating. The cool um, part is if we did this in C-sharp, we would get the exact same benefit. Because yep, it also the, short circuits everything. And it would look exactly the same almost. This code is almost, almost completely identical in C-sharp. The only difference we have right now is this word is aggregate, this word becomes all, and this yep. word becomes all, and that triple equals becomes a double equals. And other than that, this is C-sharp code. Yep, that's that's one thing I like about uh, ES6. Even is even like down to like the fact that we said like const, we just change that to var and we're done. <laughs> we're like... Yeah, uh, you can you can copy paste a lot of this code out straight yeah. into C sharp or vice versa, uh, which I actually have the C sharp version of this. And uh, we if people want to see that, uh, we could coordinate on doing another um, episode uh, that's very similar to this, but we write C sharp instead. Yep. Totally could. Okay, so let's. Uh, so what do we do with this one? Cards dot. Um... Straight. All right. So what's the definition of a straight? So a straight. Let's see if you've got a nice definition over here. Actually, uh, whoops. I need to fix my compiler, and then I can. So straight. Does it say five cards of mixed suit in sequence? Uh, so I don't care whether they're of mixed suit. Uh, I just care that it's five cards in sequence. Yeah, because the mixed suit thing we've already solved through other means, right? Yes, we could say it doesn't have a flush. Yeah, well, <laughs> since the since the way they evaluate the short circuit, then it takes care of it. We, yes. we don't even need to do that part. Because we already look for a straight flush, and then we can look... Because we could say, has royal flush, has straight flush, and then check straight and flush, mm -hmm. right? Because if it wasn't a straight flush, then clearly it's only one or the other. Okay, right. so has a straight. We want to say, um, let's see. So it's five cards in sequence. So there's a few. There's a handful of things that we know about this. One of those <laughs> is uh, that the value difference between the top and the bottom card is going to be four. You're you're absolutely right. You're on the right track. So and this is actually one of the more difficult things to solve. We, we well, because you could always do this the naive approach, right, and be like sort them using a sorting algorithm and then like make sure they step by one value right yeah so that's that's one way you could do it uh another like that's why i point out like you could because you could sort them and just say top top minus bottom equals four right that's yeah. that's one cheap way to do it and uh, probably the most efficient way to do it too um you could also do a uh, map you can map over them so you can create like a duplicate and then offset it in the map and see if they're all off by one. Uh, that's more of a, a ham-handed way to do it, but it works. Uh, but you're on the right track with the distance thing. Yeah. So so um, yeah. See, so Mo Babo is pointing out no no repo no repeats in value and difference of four between the top and the bottom. Right. Yep. Yes. They. Um, the no repeats thing is a, is a big, um, it's hard, it's a to, big deal. Yeah. That's, that's hard to determine, but, uh, like just, you know, in, a, in a, I would even like, you could do it in a naive approach pretty easily. Uh, you could put it in a hash set, for example, to make sure that you didn't duplicate. Um, wow. I'm not actually sure how to go on this one. Straight is hard. <laughs> it is. Um, huh. It's one of the hardest parts of this. I will say that. Well, let me do this then, because it'll make it a little bit easier. Let's think. Let's think simply first. So I'm going to give myself multiple lines and do it a a somewhat naive approach to begin with, and then we'll see if something jumps out. So uh, we're saying that the first thing is that uh, we have a straight if the difference between the top and the bottom card is that so I could uh, map out the values mm -hmm. uh, so if we grab the values card dot uh, we said num value so that would get me an array of the values effectively um, Uh, in C sharp, you can use distinct. Uh, well, Babo, I don't know if JavaScript has a distinct, and that's part of the reason why I say it's difficult. Yeah, but yeah, I don't. But uh, there Brave is. Cobra is actually correct. We could do it that way. That is hilarious. <laughs> Brave Cobra, that's brilliant. Yeah, I love it. It is. 
Um, uh, so essentially, you so they added a couple of new operators in ES6 uh, that use the ellipses like that. Yeah, I love the chat room. They're they're right on the money with some of this stuff. Yeah. Uh, the uh, that is so this a is gonna it's a spread, spread operator. Yes, into an array, we're going to spread a new. Uh, we're going to spread a set. So the set is what makes them unique. So that is going to get us just the distinct ones. I have not seen that yet. That and is then, awesome. Brave so, Cobra. yeah. So creating a set is going to get us basically the unique ones. That a set is a special type of collection that is effectively hashing the values so that they each have a distinct spot in the array that they own. Think of it kind of like a dictionary, but instead of having key value, it's just the keys. Mm -hmm. um, and then what we can do from that is uh, with the unique items, we would say equals, uh, we would want to say that it equals five. So return unique items uh, uh, that length equals five. Right. Would be the first check. So we have five totally unique ones. There are no pairs in here. Uh, and then uh, we need to grab the uh, highest and the lowest value. Um, so it's, uh, let's see, is chat, what's chat talking about? Do they have, because um, we can do something similar to what we just did. Uh, so the way that we can get the next one, and we can put these back together in a moment if we want, because technically I don't need the unique items variable. I could just do this straight in line right there, for example. Right. So that's and, uh, unique. Let's actually... I'm going to leave it separate for now because people, oh, like, okay. people can read it that way. And then this next one, uh, what do we want to do for this? We need to get the high and the low card. Um, is there a max operator on this where I could do like... Yes, uh, math dot max yep and I could spread the uh, cards across this yep or can it just take cards uh, no it takes a single value if you hover let's see it's giving us so do uh, I do this then so it says uh, it takes a number um, so you can't give it an object so yeah yep spread the uh, yeah the so cards. I will spread it's... the cards out Say, get me the max, uh, but uh, I need to map it to get want, the value. You want the property there. Yeah, so I need to map and get card card dot num value. So grab the maximum card num value. <clears throat> That's ugly. So I'm going to do uh, this on a separate line for a second, just until we get this right. And I don't know why I said var, but I did. Oh, because I pulled that from uh, chat. Uh, we'll say... Um, high low difference equals uh, max minus min for now. So not ideal, but it should work. High low difference equals uh, I said four, right? That's the difference between the top and the bottom card. Let's see if we got it straight. Done. All right. We're identifying so, that as a straight. And our other ones still pass. High card passes, uh, straight passes, and flush pass. And we're still calling a royal flush uh, a royal flush too. So there we go. We got everything that we say we do. Okay. Uh, do you mind if I refactor? Yeah, let's go for it. All right. So we've got a variable here called unique items, right? Yep, we don't need that um, at all. Right. So what we can actually do is we can create a little helper function. Ah, yes, that's a good idea, because we'll probably uh, need that somewhere else. So we may, exactly, we may need this somewhere else. This is another thing I like about functional programming, is it uh, gets you in this mindset. So it is going to take cards. Nice. And pop this out. And notice how I'm writing my functions. I'm not starting like this. and uh, doing the curly braces. I immediately go into a function like this because I know I'm not going to have a bunch of placeholders. Uh -huh. So you'll find after you do like a kata like this, you start getting in the habit of writing code like this, and you find out it, it's pretty addictive. 
uh, because you know you're you're writing something that's all abstracted into one expression, and it's going to be very easy code to sort through if something goes wrong and you need to go fix something. Mm -hmm. And it's nice when you have unit tests on all of those then too, because you can tell if something went wrong. Exactly. So this is like, so is unique uh, would be like, uh, is unique hand almost. So I'm going to put hand on there. Because this sure. isn't that a card is unique, that is that it, it the whole hand is unique. Uh, right. Or um, actually all unique, maybe? What do you like? Do you like uh, are all unique cards? That's fine with me, yeah. Any any of those iterations works for me. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, if so you like have... that name. We have this. Are you are all unique, uh, and it goes right so we here. can replace that there. Yep. Uh, don't forget to pass in cards. And then uh, once we do that, we have to do. We can do our get high card and get low card suggestion from chat. <laughs> so are we, we getting? Are we getting the high card and low card? Or are we just we're just getting the value? Well, yeah, but the suggestion was that if we do like get high card cards dot num value minus the other one, we don't really need to get the high and low card. There's probably another way to do it too, but I just thought that was funny. It's like, oh yeah, we already wrote a thing that gets the high card. Uh, so, uh, so we've got we've got essentially the function that we need. So we've got the difference. So we could just create a function that says, uh, what's, uh, let's see, let's do, we could say uh, card distance. We could actually do card distance as, uh, we could do that as another aggregate and, and reduce that one as well. Uh, taking in the card value instead of uh, so if we essentially mapped all the cards to their values, we could reduce that into a difference where we'd expect it to be a difference of four. So <laughs> two values. Yeah, there you go. So save, save our little... Uh... So we're going to take these two values. We say cards.map. Yeah, that's what we're doing, Brave Cobra. We're we're talking about reducing it uh, based on that. Uh, and uh, while you're typing that, I'll explain how the I'll explain again how are all unique works because uh, that that does do a little bit of magic. So um, someone asked in chat. So there's a couple of things going on here. So the first is uh, the square braces that I have here. Those make that into an array. Uh, the next thing is the three ellipses here at the beginning. That is called the spread operator in um, Java in, in ES6 in JavaScript. Essentially, what that does is that says take the take my next argument, whatever it is, after the spread operator, and essentially like unpack it. So it's some kind of an enumerable. So it's an array or something like that. Treat it instead like its individual elements. So I'm basically saying create an array out of the values that are inside of my set object. And now if you're wondering what a set object is, that is a special type of object. In this case, it's called a hash. Uh, it, we'd usually call it like a hash set or something like that. Uh, essentially, the way a set works is uh, all the items within a set are unique. And so since we, since we know that, the way it stores it is it, it takes the hash of the value of it and puts that in and essentially uses that as like the key of where it's stored is kind of the way that usually these things are built. Uh, and so this, so think of this kind of like a dictionary and if you're used to C-sharp or, or something like that, um, except instead of having key value, it's just the key. Uh, and so these are all going to be unique values. Uh, aren't cards objects and thus will always be unique? Uh, Aaron and Cincy, uh, we could maybe do... Uh, yeah, so as Will mentioned, C-sharp has a hash set. 
Uh, so that's what, that's why I was calling it a hash set before. Uh, but if you don't know what a hash set is in C sharp, that doesn't help anyway. Uh, and probably the people that know what a hash set is in C sharp already knew what the set was here. Uh, so anyway, so the idea is, um, uh, and Aaron, I should clarify, I'm fairly certain that the card objects are actually the same object for the whole deck and we're not recreating. Uh, so I guess, yeah, every card would be unique. So we do want to do cards, uh, two values. Okay, so we've got two values, and we're reusing that function now. So that's yeah, I'm good. reusing it now too. <laughs> yeah, we've we've used it in two places now. So now we've got the distance two values from the cards, and then we've got are they all unique? Using it. So now we've taken something that was all inside of this function and split it up into multiple little functions, and then we don't need this anymore because we have an implicit return and get rid of that trailing curly brace. Which actually, instead of are all unique, uh, we could say has no pairs. Has no pairs. Yeah. At which point I almost I think we're just to... battling semantics at this point. <laughs> yeah. But but I'm realizing that that's basically the the whether or not we have a pair. But yeah. Anyway, that that works just fine. So okay, so has straight. We're saying if uh, we have all unique values, and the distance between uh, the values is four, right. and distance we wrote as take the maximum value, subtract the minimum value. So as long as all the numbers are unique, we can take the top number minus the bottom number. Negatives and variable names. Yeah, no, 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 Will, the point was if, if we had the has uh, no pairs, then we just switch it and write the has pairs. And <laughs> Yeah, I think with has pairs, uh, it's going to be a little more involved because there's, um, you know, we could have two of a kind, three of a kind, four of a kind. Uh, just saying that they're not unique doesn't necessarily mean that it's not three of a kind. All right, let's take a look. Did we make it pass? No, straight's not passing yet. We said high card. Okay, uh, did I not put it down here? Has a straight. Ooh, ouch. All unique uh, and distance equals four. Okay, so maybe, let's see. Maybe we're not passing something along correctly. So are all unique? Uh, let's see, that is... Getting cards, we spread it. Um, what we might need to do is backtrack. Uh, and this is something that it does happen from time to time. You have to actually break these back out. Um, we have this nice one line thing, but sometimes the troubleshoot, you do have to break these out and kind of trap it with uh, some a debugger or uh, some, you know, in JavaScript land, we might do a console uh, log and see what's coming out of that just to make sure. Um, all unique is doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, if we were using like a unit test framework, we could write a unit test to make sure uh, that our all unique actually does what it's supposed to do. But since we're, we're kind of using this pseudo test framework that I wrote, uh, we can't really do that. Okay, uh, let's do this. Whoops, it's all right. <laughs> <sighs> I used to Visual Studio. I tried to use yes. my extract out of variable keyboard shortcut there. <laughs> so what do we have coming out of our all unique is what we need to find out. Uh, so mm -hmm. I wanted to do... Uh, Uh, we could just toss a debugger in here. Yep, let's do that. We'll just do that, because then we don't have to even find it over here. It'll just find it for us. Whoa, because I have that on the side. Well, that got messy. 
All right. Um, well, first off, let me just run this, make sure everything's good. Okay. High card's still working. Flush is still working. Four of a kind. Straight in a royal flush. Uh, so the problem is when we ran this, uh, I think it checked that every time, didn't it? Yeah, we have five cards. Foo equals five. And... Okay, so Foo sometimes has other values. So just changing. So those are, those are the other unit tests that are going through yeah. the system. So I want to check that unit test only. Where where are these? I will admit I'm not a pro at uh, debugging uh, JavaScript. So we could um, let's see. Well, here, let's do this. Uh, there was a great suggestion from chat that I liked um, that should simplify. Uh, if we did this, we could, uh, I think we can get away with that instead of, instead of what we had. Okay. So remove uh, some of the complexity there. Just make an, and actually, do we need to do this maybe? New set. Uh, I don't think we need those last parens that I added in there. That seemed to not work. Size is not a function. There we go. So, full house and a straight. We're calling that a high card still. Okay, so it's it's just falling straight through to the default value. Um, <clears throat> so it's not finding it. It's not misidentifying it. Uh, so one of our one of our pieces of code is bad. Um, let's see. This is which unit test? Which number is it? I think they run in order. My test framework equals console.log. <laughs> yeah, <that, laughs> Thanks, Bobo. Yeah, that's, that's actually where I'm headed with this. Um, so straight is number six, right? This is our sixth one. Yeah, that's number six. Okay. I believe that should be about the order they fall in. So we could we could write some things out to the console if we wanted to and look at uh, it. should be the last. Is it the last one? That's the highest test we've done so far. So it'll, it'll probably be the last set of outputs if we do a console log, since it's going to go through each one of these. So we could just step through and stop at number six? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, okay. Let's, let's try it. So I will open that back up again. And so there's... Sources. I'm going to drop my breakpoint back in. And I noticed we haven't saved. I don't know what got typed. And I don't know if that matters, but something didn't get saved. It's saved right now, I think. Oh, okay. It wasn't on mine, it was shown it was still okay. being uh, edited. So uh, either so we're let's either. Do this. Yeah. We've got a problem either in unique or a problem in our, um, I think, two either two values. We need to make sure that mapping is happening correctly. OK, so that is probably uh, number one. Num uh, wait, what's not a function? Oh, I didn't return. Ah, Turn. Eh, eh, eh. So 
Oh, what? I know I got rid of that. Maybe I maybe I control Z'd that back in. That might have been with that that pending change was when it needed to be saved. I might have slipped and hit that key. Okay, so this I clicked that six times. I think this should be the one we're expecting. Um, what? Are, nope. Let's see. King, king, that's, jack, that's, ten, ten. Nope, that's two pair. That's four of a kind. I mean, two pair. You're right. Sorry. Four of a kind. Oh, yeah, my my brain short circuited. That's a pair. That's two uh, tens. Yeah, that's two pair. I mean, two pair. You said. Yeah. That's also not it. All right. Let me try that again, and we'll just eyeball it. Because they're apparently not in the order I think they are. Same here, and I wrote this. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hey, there we go. All of hearts. That's a that is a that is a straight. So we should come back with all our unique. So this lets us check, right? Yeah. This is the straight flush. We should have this be all unique. So let me grab the console right here, and I am just going to call this and find out size five. Okay. So this is going to return true. Okay, so that seems like it's working. So I may have fat fingered something on the pieces of code that I wrote. Has a straight. Uh, it could be code I wrote too. Uh, so we're saying distance needs to equal four. So let's see if I can get that breakpoint to catch. Uh, okay, so two values should map to the card numbers. So check the output of two values to make sure we're wait, hang on, hang on. We didn't we didn't actually catch that. That little breakpoint I tried to drop there didn't work. Oh, it didn't work. Because that's gonna catch on the uh that's gonna catch on the creation of distance, not not actually when we're trying to get there. So a little little Visual Studio tip. Uh Visual Studio code, I don't know if it has this or not, but Visual Studio you can hover over a um uh, expression bodied member, which is what this inline function is called without the return. It's what we would call it in C sharp. Yeah. Uh, you can actually toggle between those in the ID in Visual Studio. Uh, there's a little magic light bulb that comes up and you can just click a button and it'll it'll give you the brackets or without the brackets. Oh whoops. Derp. There we go. Someone was probably telling me about that derp in chat. We'll see if they if they suggested it. <laughs> but Janisku got typed in derp. Uh, yeah, that was re-added to size. Yeah, I noticed. Bug found. Uh, so tomorrow you start with uh, advent of code in F sharp. Uh, no, I wasn't. I wasn't planning on it. Wasn't planning on it. You just duplicate the function so you. Oh, that is funny. Yes, I could just I could just duplicate the function. Uh, I'm not going to. But that's a really good suggestion, so maybe yeah. I will. Good old JavaScript, right? It'll just take the the last one. In C sharp, that would not be happening. <laughs> it would throw fit. <laughs> and I think it'll allow that. And that's the stupid part. <laughs> uh, whoops, did not mean to do that. Um... But thank you, JavaScript, for being completely ridiculous sometimes. Right. Sometimes it helps you out of a sad situation, but other times it creates more than it solves. There we go. Uh, so we now have my, my duplicate functions overriding the ones that came before them. So magic in... Uh, yeah, exactly, Will. Uh, <laughs> magic of JavaScript. Uh, I can just declare the same method again. What do you mean? Okay, failed to compile. Is it actually going to yell at me about those? It is. Okay. So it doesn't like that I did that. You so. can comment. You can comment yeah. one out. Yeah, I can comment one out. So we'll do that and that. I guess because it's actually getting compiled correctly, it doesn't like it. We are still failing in the right stuff. We are. Let's pull our debugger back up. Just uh, check, our, oh. check our map to see uh, what values are coming out of there. Okay, so all are unique. Um, yeah. That one's I think is working. So yeah, we think that one's working. So we don't really need to break on that one every time anymore. 
Sure, but are these our values? So these are values of a straight. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine. Mm -hmm. So this this should still work. Yeah, so our two values check, should work. Check the map. Yeah, so it, I mean that one's pretty straightforward. I'm it's straightforward. Pretty but sure. Why not check it? I'm pretty sure, but yeah, it's it's worth checking. So we five, know six, two, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so that's correct. Two values works. Yep. And then. Uh, Uh, where do we go? I want to step, step. Nope. It jumped me to the next one. Okay, so I need to get another, I need to get another one of these set up. So we're going to duplicate distance now. And then in my duplicated distance, I am going to add a debugger as well. Whoops, I meant to do that here. Yeah, I was just thinking we probably could have done this another way too. We probably could have troubleshot this uh, uh, by the rule of halves and just said um, we could have commented out uh, at our and also and seen if it passed. So True. on has straight, we could have just commented out the first half uh, and then seen if it passed and then commented out the second half and seen if it passed. Okay, so what do we got here? So that is, oh, are all unique. I should get rid of the one on are all unique because we think it's working. We think it's working. Pretty sure. So we'll get rid of that. Some false and two values seems to, seems to work also. So let's just look at the distance and see if we get something weird. So this has values 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And what does distance return? Oh, I didn't actually type return on that. Well, that's going to bomb here in a second. Luckily, we're not going to get to that because I'm going to check it first. Uh, I'm not hitting save yet, so it doesn't reload. Nan. There's our problem. We got back got Nan. Number. So <laughs> we're... <clears throat> uh, uh, what is num value is equal to? Nan. Oh, we didn't spread it. We didn't. Yep. We didn't spread in that. Yeah, see, you're you're right. <laughs> when we translated it here, we just didn't spread them. There we go. That was our problem. Uh, actually, I should do that up here. Uh, we'll test this real fast and then undo if it doesn't work. So actually, I'm going to leave those and uh, so we can get the breakpoint. Uh, did, I, did I kill this page? I apparently killed the page. There we go. I'm back. Um, straight. Green. All right. Woohoo. All right. So it is passing now. Good. So that was all we just forgot to do the spread on that. So math.max does not work on a collection. It works on individual past parameters. And that is that is one of the annoyances. I now want, since JavaScript added this, like, why don't they just make it accept an array now and, and spread it for <laughs> us if we didn't? Do, it's like, is the type an array? Is it's an enumerable? Okay, spread it for them. <laughs> right, Come on, guys. Exactly. They could check the type of what we passed in. What's the point of being a dynamic language if I have to pay attention to types? <laughs> uh, if I wanted that, I'd just be in C sharp, right? Exactly. Although the funny thing is, in C sharp, you can actually check the same kind of thing if you had an interface or something like that, or it was, <laughs> and uh, so, I could use pattern matching. So now we've got has a royal flush. Have straight. Do we check and see if it worked? I'm pretty sure that was the issue, so it should pass. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. Uh, we have straight and we have straight flush. flush. Royal flush. So stop right there. Uh, scroll back down to number two. Oh, uh, number two. Straight so, flush. Yes. Straight flush. We have a freebie, right? Yeah, that's a freebie. So now we can create a a const or a function called straight flush. Uh, we could do has straight flush. Yep. And let's just do this. Uh, actually, I'm going to put it right above the royal flush. Has straight flush equals guards 
uh, has flush and has straight. Don't forget to pass and your parameter. pass in cards. Has so flush I'm sure. And has straight. Yep. I'm sure you can relate to some of the real world scenarios that are coming out of this. I mean, these are things we do all the time, right? Get data out of a database, check to see if some values are within some range, see if there's unique values or not. That's pretty much all we do, right? This uh, card poker thing just really mimics like yeah. uh, the data access layer of an application. And, and one of the things that I will tell you, um, I have actually written more than one application whose job it was was to distribute money to people. And so that's another one of those things where like you start off by writing a mass ton of tests. And <laughs> yeah. like that is seriously what I did for those. It's like I didn't do the one test at a time. I did the here's a mass ton of tests. And then I still wrote like the, the very simple tests, one test at a time. But it's like, no, there's very strict rules on exactly how this money needs to get distributed in all these various scenarios. Like, yeah, you, you, you test the crap out of that and you figure out like, okay, what's the best way to do this to make sure that everything works right? And the tests will keep me safe. Now, for all intents and purposes, the few tests that are on this kata just get you the basics, right? There should be some other coverage to look for like false positives and things. Uh, but, you know, hopefully people would write more extensive tests than the few that are here just to kind of show you how to write this code. Yeah, so Brave Cobra has an interesting point, although there's one exception to that, uh, Brave Cobra. Uh, the, num the size of the set uh, won't really tell you that because the problem is a two pair and a four of a, a two pair and a three of a kind are going to look the same. Yep, Exactly. The two pair and the three of a kind look the same, as well as does the full house and the four of a kind. Yeah. <laughs> if you look at the set. Uh, but that can help get you closer. So you can use that size to get you there. Because you could say that the, the set of two, for example, and that there is you know one that has a single or something like that. Uh, but there are ways of doing that. If anything, I would do. Uh, I would. I would love a way to do like a group and account kind of approach, uh, something akin to like Ex what I might do in Link. Exactly. Um, <laughs> do, do you want to go after those next, or do you want to do some of the other tests? Uh, what are the other tests other than? Uh, there's three of a kind, pair, two pair, four of a kind, full house. Right? Is there not full house? There's full house. Yeah, oh, there's full house. Right there. Okay, I just I scrolled past it. There's Kimmy and uh, hey, scrolling Bob is hard, man. And the rest of the full house. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> now everybody knows how old you are. Yeah, exactly. No, I just watched the reboot on. Oh, Netflix. okay, yeah, yeah, that could be. That could be. All right, so <laughs> I I guess let's that. do those next. <laughs> um, can Can we cheat? Or uh, uh, do we not want to? Sure. Cheat? Yeah. No, I'm good with cheating. I like cheating. Okay. Cheating is fun. So let's as cheat. long as you're cheating for fun. If you're like cheating to like intentionally beat someone, you're a douche. I'm I'm <laughs> going to say I've done some extensive work on this problem, and there is no group by function built into JavaScript. Did the you chat write room, one? if if uh, if the chat room has a uh, built-in ES6 function that does a group by, please let me know. I don't believe there is one. I'm not, I am pretty darn fluent in JavaScript, but I wouldn't call myself the end all be all expert. So somebody may some, know something I do not, but I'll say there isn't one. I don't know uh, of something that does the same group by concept that C Sharp's uh, link group by does. So I do know of a wonderful um, framework that is by a company called Telerik that I happen to work for. <laughs> that has this group by function. Uh, so let's see. In our uh, dependencies, I don't know. Are you showing the same screen I'm looking at? I don't know. Yeah, you. the screen that you okay. that I have shared with you is the one that we're looking at. So if you're looking in Skype. Okay, go into package.json for me, please. Uh, I, it's a, it seems like I cannot open that on your screen. Oh, yeah, that would, that, uh, that would actually make sense. Um, so... I, Oh, uh, I'm not anchored to you. That's why. There you go. Ah, okay. So 
in uh, in this example, remember I said the data grid was powered by Kendo UI? Mm -hmm. or Kendo, sorry, it's Kendo React now. Uh, this version of it is called Kendo React. So it's Kendo UI for React. And that, that data grid is powered by something called Kendo Data Query. Uh, this does... Sorry, go ahead. That, that's not what that says. This one says Kendo Data Query. Oh, weird. Uh, you're highlighting something completely different on my okay. screen. Yeah, if you look in um, Skype, so you'll notice that that was weird. So line 12, or 11, sorry. Line 11 um, says progress Kendo data query. Uh, so the, this, again, it's a commercial library. So just for full disclosure for people watching, um, this isn't something that's uh, like an open source project or whatever. This is a paid thing. Uh, but it does, the data query underpins the... Um, the data grid and lets it do sorting, filtering, grouping, and all that stuff. What's nice is we can access that functionality. So I'm going to go back to scoring and we're going to cheat and we're going to use Kendo UI uh, instead of writing our own grouping algorithm. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so, so f funny thing, we were just talking in chat, uh, that line number you said and the line you were <laughs> highlighting, that is not what we see on They're our end. So VS Live oh, Share is so doing weird. something weird. Yeah, yeah. It, it's got to be live share. Uh, so, sorry, right, live share guys, I, you I'm make a wonderful back. thing, but <laughs> and I'm gonna cop. I'll copy this line out for just a second because uh, we're actually gonna use a piece of this anyway. So, uh, the line that I was talking about inside of now, I want to uh, know what you've got on your clipboard. <laughs> package.json should read this: progress Kendo data query. Yeah, that's not the line you highlighted, but sure. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Okay, so. It's already in the project, so we're going to do import because mm. we're going to use it here. Wait, hang on. Oh, What's okay. Up? Aaron and Cincy. No, he, okay. Aaron and Cincy had a suggestion, uh, but he says it's wrong. All okay. right. So uh, if there's a native way to do this, then by all means, uh, I'd like to know about it. But oh, what we sorry. can do is say, I'm going to take the group by function from it. So I'm just going to pull the group by function out of Kendo Data Query. What's nice about Kendo Data Query is it follows the functional programming principle where it's not going to manipulate our data. So it will only create a new instance of the data it returns. Does that make sense? So much like... Yeah, it doesn't um, have side effects. Yes, it doesn't have side yep. effects. Uh, if I call cards.map, it returns a brand new collection of cards. Mm -hmm. uh, the same way the that, same way that it would in Link, by, for example. Yes. The, uh, sorry, the collection's unique, but the individual elements of it would be the same elements still, right? The same elements, but it'd be a new instance. It'd be a of, new collection, but the exact same objects in the collection. Right. Yeah, it doesn't do like a deep copy of it when it does this. Um... I would hope. That's something I'd have to check on. I don't, okay. I don't know off the top of my head to say either way. Um, so I do want to give another example while we're on the subject of what is um, returning a new collection, what is not. So uh, we used things like map, and uh, we used uh, every is not a good example. There's reduce. Um, all of these things return a uh, new instance of stuff, right? Map returns a new array mm -hmm. or, yep, or list yep. of objects. Uh, reduce turns a new, returns a new item. Yep. Um, filter gets gotcha. you a new collection as well. Yeah, yeah. Filter is another one that we could say. Filter. Yep. Another great example. Filter. Filer. Yeah. Um, however, if you do sort in JavaScript, it yeah, will that, that has it side will effects. Be it yeah, because that one's not that one's not one of the original ones. That, that's one of the original ones. That's not a new one. Yes. So there yeah. actually is a way around that, and we're not using it here. But um, if you want to get a unique or not a unique sort, but if you wanted to return a new instance, what you can do is wrap it in one of these handy little guys. So you can say dot 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 sort. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and this you'd put will like, copy it, and you then do sort. like my array, right? Copy all the elements into a new array and then and then sort it like that. Yep. Exactly. So I just wanted to point that out because in C sharp, all even the sort returns are order uh, by, but I, but the reason why is because we didn't have an order by until we got our set of uh, functional extension methods built for link. Precisely. Yep. yep. 
The other one uh, that, that does the same thing is reverse. Okay. So in sort and reverse JavaScript. in JavaScript will, will have side effects. So it's just remember that if you're new to these things, uh, sort and reverse have side effects. If you don't want them to have side effects, you have to use the spread operator uh, initially, and, and that will just make a copy of it. So the copy gets uh, the side effects. Yeah, and, and when you do happening. this, keep in mind that that's not going to duplicate the individual objects themselves. It's just going to make a new collection of those objects. Right. When you do that spread and new array. Hey, Bokyo, welcome. Uh, <laughs> Bokyo, so, I was wondering where your blazer is. <laughs> So with that said, um, a blazer, well, we'll talk about blazer on Friday uh, if anybody's interested. But um, I just wanted to point out that group by in the Kendo UI data query library uh, does do a, um, oh, somebody somebody fired Someone off the chat. Someone sent us one of these. One. Yeah, I'm going to take a look at it. Let's, that let's, is, let's see it. Why not? Right? It's a reduce. Uh, so... Where is that going to? The problem is it's it. Uh, hang on, can I? Uh, do I have word wrap on? Word wrap. There we go. Okay, I can actually see what's here now. Uh, so he's taking. So what did he do? He took in the items, a key selector, and a value selector. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're saying reduce. That's that. So essentially, taking the existing groups each time. Uh, adding this item into a group so we're gonna say with groups use the key selector to get the key that's what we're gonna use as the key uh, and then we're going to assign into that uh, an array where we have spread that out and selected uh, from the existing group all the ones with the key and then adding in another item so this is an array that has more than one thing in it. So I want to make that clear. If we want to show this code, then we want to do this. So that that's a little easier to read. Uh, like that-ish. If I got that right, then that would return <laughs> that. And this would have to return this as well if I did it this way, but then I'm like one line too far. Yeah, oh, that got me that got messy quickly. Yeah. But yes, I get what I get what it is, and it totally makes sense. Uh, so let me let me get rid of my curlies because I, I don't think they made it any better. So an, an elaborate reduce can also do a group apparently. We are missing a comma or something somewhere that's not quite perfect. But yeah, an elaborate reduce can make a group by. Uh, I get I get what it's doing. So we are returning back the groups object. That adds in the item. And there should be a closing square brace right after the value selector. Is it here? There, I think that's the correct syntax. So then we pass it cards and the key selector and the value selector. What's the key selector? What are we passing into this? Why do we have three parameters? I'm confused. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll have to figure um, that one can, out we later. Anyway. Visit that one if we want to try yeah, to replace We'll take a look at it later. Make. Um, so let's we'll just use cheating. the one that we know works. <laughs> Let's continue cheating. Um, I'm gonna. So I've used an import because it was. I already uh -huh. had it in my npm packages uh, because I yep. use Kento UI and I'm awesome yep. and yep. I love it. Um, and I've been a, a person that purchases it for ten years now. And uh, I've got my group by. So I have my group by function, and now I want to actually utilize that group by function. So I can say const. Um, I'm gonna say give me two. Because uh, I'm going to kind of convert this to another uh, type of array or collection. So I'm going to say, give me the number value groups. OK? Mm -hmm. So I will take in cards, and I'm going to convert that to this number value group. 
to do that, I just call group by because that's what I imported up here at the top. Mm -hmm. And then group by takes the cards. So it's going to take that array of objects. And then we pass it um, an array of filter options. Okay. So it's going to take an array of options. And we want to take the field that is number value. That's what we're grouping on. Okay. Yeah. So just that simple. That will give us back a new collection um, of objects that has, uh, and I'm missing an arrow here. It'll be like num value and the count of them, right? Yeah, it'll it'll have it'll have uh, field and, and count or something. So we're grouping on num value. So num value will have. Uh, let's see, how can I break this down? It will have the value, which, uh, for example, if we had two fives. It would have the value of five, mm -hmm. uh, and it would contain an array of the items that have five in it. Oh, okay. So we would grab that from the the length of the array then to get the the number of them. Right. And is it actually going to have the original objects in that as well? Then I hope. Yes, it will have an array with the original objects in it. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Yep. So it's a very handy little thing. And like I said, this powers that Kendo UI grid uh, that's on the actual web page. Yeah. That, so the, the that complexity in this one is that it used a value selector to put the item in instead of just putting the whole item. Uh, it could have just, you know, we could have just said put the whole item in from the item set. Uh, but this let you select what you wanted off of it. So uh, if you I... wanted the, the group by to have something less, you could do that. I think is gotcha. what he was doing. So yeah, uh, but okay. yeah, that's all that was doing is it's making a group that uses as the key what the key is, and then as the value, uh, you can then just use the item. So in that case, we could just chop this, and instead of value selector, do that. Okay. And then it then it's effectively the same thing. But yeah. Anyway, let's continue using the one we've got here. <laughs> all right. Because we know that one. Uh, we know yours works. So now we have these groups, and we have to get something from the groups. Uh, and you already said it. Uh, we can just get the count, right? Um, so we could we get something back. So const we'll start with another function, um, and I'm going to start generic here. I'm going to say has of a kind because we have multiple of a kind to get, right? So we might yep. have. Um, well, like two of a kind, three of a kind. So we have the number that we want to get of a kind. And then we want to pass in cards so we can call our uh, two number values. So yeah, we do so, something like that. So we would call this with has of a kind two comma cards to see if there's a pair. Right. So we could say... Uh, uh, two num value groups and then passing cards and then on cards uh, we're going to get back an array that uh, let's see let's do some comments up here so we can kind of visualize what's coming back from this um, trying to remember what this looks like uh, so it should be an object that comes back that <laughs> looks like this and it'll say value um, and for example it might be five and then it'll have items and that items is an array of cards okay yep makes sense and uh, I did want to point out one thing Brave Cobra made a mention in chat uh, of a suggestion of switching those parameters and normally I would think the same way however there's actually one reason why I would act I would use the ordering that Ed wrote here in this code, and uh, I will explain why. Uh, so that is the idea that a lot of times um, the second parameter, this cards, you might do something like, uh, you could treat it kind of like an, a, a params sort of thing, where that array could, you know, you might want to add additional things. So sometimes when you are going to do the collection like that, having it on the end can let you get away with that a little bit more. Not that we're doing it here, but just for like a future thing. If we wanted to write it in that way, then it's easier to, say, spread and add commas to do like an effective um, 
uh, union of two arrays uh, of those elements. But we couldn't do that if uh, it's not the last parameter. And I'll show a way that we can do something else with this too. So I'll show what, uh, what they call currying. So that will actually, we'll be, we'll be able to refactor this down to one parameter. Uh, so we'll start with this. We'll say uh, cards, and then we're going to get that. Uh, shoot, did I take it off of there? I should have left that up here. Oh, the, so, uh, the comment, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're getting something back that looks something like this. So we have value, which is going to be the, the item we grouped on, the value mm -hmm. we grouped on. I'm going to say five, because I think there's two pairs of fives in that data set. Is, uh, so we have an array of, of these them. objects. So effectively, we uh, have... There's tens on the first So you're layer. saying we have that. We yep. have an array of these objects. So I'm going to put the array in there, too. So that should be what we get back. And then in there, there would be Which, something like, like this. Actually, so let me values. do this. Put it on that one, because it's the return value of this. Yep, it's going to return something like that, where... Um, one one of the items might be uh, 10 because there's two 10s and then that would have uh, yep you're you're good so that would contain the entire object which would have other stuff that's what we get back and I think that illustrates enough without having all the values what this mm -hmm. gives us so now we can count those things, right? So we can make a count of uh, the number of things that came back uh, from that. So we can say um, we can count the number of, I don't know if this is highlighting where it's supposed to be, uh, but in that object, uh, we can say, did we count, is that number of items greater than a number or equal to a number and so on? Uh, so what we could do is we could do this. We could say sum, and then we could say the group of things, G, has items. Yep, and to translate for all the C-sharp people, sum is the JavaScript equivalent of any. <laughs> Figure I'll give the clarification there. Absolutely. <laughs> so I think that would work. Uh, where... Uh, two num value group cards. Uh, so we're going to group them, we're, and we're going to say uh, we have an uh, of a kind if some of those groupings, so at least one of those groupings, has an item length. Uh, no, we don't want uh, items length equal to one. We want, uh, don't we want uh, item uh, that's, uh, don't we want to do, because so we'll we want to check the value, right? We want to make sure nope. that, the, no, not the value, uh, item, we oh yeah, no, no, value. yeah, you're good, no, you're good, yeah, Any, anyone that has a pair, yep, 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 we're good, in, we're good. I don't know if you could see me highlighting. Yep, yep I um, can, yep, we're good, ex we're explain totally on board. If we have the value of 10, <laughs> there should be two items in this, yep. which may mean there's a pair of two, or a pair, a pair. Two of a kind. So that, uh, so let me change uh, this so kind. I don't so I don't be stupid again. Quantity. Okay. Now now, now I won't works. be dumb anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a quantity of two inside of that set. So that that sounds like it'll work to me. Um, now we can say uh, has pair right. So we can do um, constant has pair. Mm-hmm. And then that's just a helper calling this. We're going to pass in cards again. And then we will uh, return to, uh, oh, sorry, has of a kind. IntelliSense doesn't want to help me for some reason, but we'll run with it. Uh, has of kind. And then we can just say to here. Uh, we also have to pass cards. Uh, so we need to remember that as well. Thanks, Brave Cobra. We, we can refactor that out, though. Um, and I'll show that in a minute. Uh, sorry, I didn't catch up with the chat room. What's, what's uh, Brave Co Cobra's wisdom? 
Uh, he's been very helpful. Yeah, so Brave Cobra was, uh, just noticed a typo that we had, and oh, I already typo. fixed it while you weren't okay, cool. while you were doing other stuff. Because that's why. Um, <laughs> that's why I said IntelliSense was failing me. I was trying to type that, and it wasn't helping me. Yeah, so. it's because it was written as "cas of a kind" instead of "has of a kind." Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, uh, we so have fixed that. So check this one out, and the pairs, the bottom right. Yeah, pairs. Go Whoa, that's jumping around a whole bunch. Is it? It's yeah, fine sorry. Works yeah. on my machine. No, it was just live share trying to jump between where I left my cursor and where you were. And oh, okay. It was I'm bouncing the back and forth. I think I just freaked everybody out. So yeah, that'll that'll kind of work because uh, it it will check the has a pair and it's probably going to report back pair for some of the other ones that are definitely not pairs, which I'm good so. with. Because it's at the bottom of the chain. Yeah, yeah, no, but it's going to tell us that are like three of a kind is a pair. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that <laughs> is possible that may happen. Well, uh, whoops, no, because we're checking to see if the length is equal to two. So the other one, the other ones shouldn't pass. Maybe four of a kind might. Wait, false hang positive on. on us. Has of a kind equals that. Wait, it's complaining about something. What's it complaining about? It's not defined. Card is not defined. Line 23. Line 45. Hmm. What is going on? Oh, cards on that one. Okay. Yep. Not bad. Uh, and what does our uh, test look like? Hey, there we go. Okay, cool. So pair is we... passing. What what are we false positive on? Uh, well, so we're calling a uh, we're calling a two pair a pair, which makes sense. We're calling a three three of a kind. We're calling a high card, which it's true. It's going to say that, and a full house. It's going to say pair. Okay, so it's saying because pair, there was a pair still not passing the test. Yeah, so the, it is reporting back a pair, which is okay. Yeah, it it should. There is a pair, and all we said was has a pair. We didn't say like has only a pair. Oh, it was a capital so, K. Okay. So now we've got, um, now we've got has of a kind, which is super generic. We have has pair, and now we just really need to duplicate this, right? Got it. Uh, yeah. Uh, Brave Cobra is correct. I, so I just fixed it. So the A and the K, the K is capital. Oh, In that's our, what it was I was tripping. I, I just huh? switched that now. Yeah. So it was casing. That's why it was yelling at us that whole time. Uh, okay. I copy so now, I copy pasted. I was like, I'm not even gonna figure that. I'm just copy paste and see what happens. <laughs> uh, and so one of the one of the tricks that that Ed is doing is actually one of my favorite things to do in programming, um, for this kind of stuff. So especially if you're doing so, this essentially I usually call this a rules engine. That's basically what this is. Um, I mean, it's kind of like it's similar. So we do these same kinds of check when we when we do a rules engine. And the yes. idea is a lot of times you'll write these um, more general methods. So that's what our has of a kind is. So sometimes when you write these, you start with the general one, like the has of a kind. Or you could start with the has pair, has three of a kind, and then extract out the general one, which is what we have. But then you leave the names because it's really easy to read has pair, has three of a kind, has four of a kind. Right. And I'll point out again, too, like since we're using this functional approach, if there's an error in one of these pieces of code, it's really easy to track back. So if four of a kind is failing, then it's going to lead us to has of a kind, and then we can check has of a kind. And if that's failing, then maybe number groups is failing. And we just follow the chain up until we find out where the error is. But it's, uh, it's not searching through spaghetti code to figure out what's happening. So Did you that, just kick your desk? No, I bumped my microphone. Sorry, oh, okay. if, uh, that made people's <laughs> ears bleed. So that should have passed some more tests. Can we? Uh, we didn't use them. Uh, oh, we didn't use them. You're right. That's uh, quit smoking. I got ahead crack. of myself. I got way ahead of myself. Has four of a kind cards. And, I, and I'm going to point out too that the order of operations that you're using here really matter. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Uh, whoops. Uh, that was a question so mark, not a... Put, 
if you put those hand rankings in the wrong order, they will not work right. It's three of a kind. Very careful. Three of a kind. Uh, which I'm get just guessing is the naming you did. If I got I'm it wrong, I will fix. Pretty sure it is. Three correct. of a kind. Four of a kind. Okay, so all we're missing now is the full house and the two pair. Okay, full house is going to be super simple. Because we already have... The full house is basically we have a pair and we have a three of a kind. Right. Which I could do right here. Uh, so I could just say has full house mm -hmm. cards. And we'll say... Which really in this one... The four of a kind and the full house could be in either order. That's fine. They just have to be, this just has to be a head of three of a kind in pair. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll run into a problem. Uh, okay, so has full house needs to get defined, and I will put that up here by these. Const has full house, which is going to be a method that takes in a set of cards, and it's a method because I'm giving it a fat arrow, and we're going <coughs> to say has pair cards and has three of a kind cards right yep that should do it and i believe i already used it I already did let's check it out three of a kind full house flush straight row flush so our only failing test is two pair so let's do some refactoring first. Okay, um, yeah, it's, we can do it's that. It's somewhat unnecessary, so I will admit that. Um, <laughs> but it's it's a very handy trick to know. So this For is the record, Ed, <laughs> all refactoring is unnecessary. But <laughs> we should always true. do it. It's very true because we yes. have passing tests. Um, but the code here is pretty simple as it stands. So this is getting really, really nitpicky. Um, but it's it's a really handy trick to know because it helps you in other ways, and I'll, I'll try to explain afterwards. Um, so we're calling this has of a kind, we're having to pass in two parameters. But notice there's a pattern that we're always passing in cards, right? So we can actually do some refactoring here. Um, this may sound a little confusing at first, but what we can do is we can refactor this out to where um, there's a function that returns another function, and that's called currying. Uh huh. So what we do is in has of a kind, instead of having two parameters, what we can do is take a quantity and pass that to a function like this. That that function takes cards. Mm -hmm. Yep, makes okay. sense. So now we call has of a kind and pass it cards. Um, and that's constant. So we can actually take away that because when we call has of a kind and pass in two, it's going to return a function that accepts cards that does the operation that we need it to do. Yeah. So, um, essentially to explain, uh, the, the, this is, this is mildly mind bending here, uh, because <laughs> this would, because to, to explain, uh, we could have written this slightly differently so that this would make sense. If you had read just a word here, like, um, you know, my, if I did like in, internal uh, has pair, right? And and this would make sense. And you, you might understand that, uh, whoops, hang on, I need to unpin because I just jumped to you, um, that I might have like a function named internal has pair, right? that takes in cards and and if i had called it like this you'd be like oh okay got it he's he's assigning to that one right and mm -hmm. you would get that that's what i was doing uh it just happens that what returns from this method is a function that can satisfy the right hand side of this fat arrow as <laughs> if i'd put a name there so right. like we can do this same. So for anyone that's a C sharp guy, we can actually do this same thing that they're doing th that that we're doing here in the JavaScript over in C sharp. It yep. just looks weird. It because, looks like hell. Yeah. <laughs> so if you've ever seen someone do one of these in C sharp, where we do like a a cards dot select, and instead of saying you know card fat arrow, you know card dot 
uh, you know, num value, right? Where we were trying to select the num value, I might just say get num value, and that's a special method that takes in a card and returns a num value. And so that's mm -hmm. essentially what we're doing here is just supplying the method that handles this. So. Right. So what it what it actually does is when we call has of a kind, it passes in two. So it passes the quantity oh. of two, which then returns a function. So it's returning an entire function of car of um, a method that takes cards and performs this operation. So it's returning another function. And then that function gets executed with cards as the parameter, and then the entire thing executes and returns back our has of a kind value, true or false. I didn't see what you were writing down there. <laughs> no, no, I was deleting. Uh, I fixed these. Fix them. How? They're no longer functions. Are you sure? Um... No, no, you're right. Because <laughs> because this is returning a function. No, you're right. Yeah, you got me. Um, good eye. So Hang we're on. returning since we're returning a function, uh, these no longer need to be functions. Yeah, because it is one. And, and when I was talking, uh, uh, when you said we can do this in C sharp, and I said it looks like hell, I wasn't saying the execution of it looks bad. It's the signature for this method is complete nonsense. Uh, so in C sharp, this would be something like a funk of a funk. Whoa, whoa, no, 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 no. It is not a funk of a funk, it's a var. <laughs> because I'm not going to write it in C sharp because it lets me not. So, uh, so I like to use var when the type would be unknown. So just to be clear on how I use that, except there's a condition. If it's going to look really nasty if I don't use var, I use var. The method signature for this in C sharp is gnarly. I mean, it is yeah. bad looking. Um, there's a little little saying I have uh, because it's going to end up being a funk of a funk that takes cards um, that comma takes a number integer <laughs> uh, that returns a thing, and then it ends up being like this, and the the you know the arrows keep coming out like this. Um, the number of these are like your sh your your general chevrons in the military. Yeah, like that's your rank. Like the number of these things you can stack up is the higher your rank. I don't actually think it's that. I don't think it's quite that bad, is it? It's a it's well, hang on. What is it? It's a funk of um. It's a funk of. So it's a function that takes a takes quantity. In an in, it takes in an integer. It takes an int, comma, a function. And then it takes and, and takes uh, yeah. An array. It returns back a function that takes an, a, uh, we'll say an I enumerable, because that's right. probably what you're going to have it. Well, yeah, it's going to be an I enumerable, because uh, you want to be general about it, of card of objects. Right. And it returns, and uh, what does it return back? It returns back a... Uh, bool. Uh, it returns bool. a bool, yeah. And yeah, then and that's all it cloak. is. It's not too bad. That's but, not bad at all. Unless unless that I enumerable is of, <laughs> or that card is of something of T. <laughs> you get the point. It can get real messy really quick. Yeah. But what the the point you made, though, is you can call something like select, uh, and then you don't have to pass in the parameter with the thing. You just pass the function. So you can say do uh, some filter like that, yeah, filter. And I use those all the time. And we could do the same thing in, in JavaScript as well. Um, we could say, um, for example, we have uh, this uh, the map method or the filter. Let's say filter. We have dot filter. And filter uh -huh. takes um, a function. Yeah, filter takes has, a selector. Uh, a selector. Yeah. So if we have something that we're filtering and the, the function that we already have takes like x, y, z, and all that, um, and we don't want to pass uh, y and z in, then we can create this currying effect that essentially lets us just call the function without any of the parameters. So we can just say it like that. Yeah. Uh, so that it makes it a lot cleaner. Yeah, it um, makes it fun. Yeah, it makes it fun. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So let's do our last one. Example. 
And I want to do our two well pair. Here. So let's do two pair. Do you want to do it? Uh, has of a kind. Uh, we kind of have it already. Almost. We don't quite have it. Because our has of a kind just returns back whether or not there is one. So we, we could extract that to see how many pairs there are even. Yep. So instead of doing the sum, we could do a count of them. And uh, then the of a kind is just, you know, the count is, is greater than zero, right? Yeah. So we could extract that out. Uh... So we we have to kind of reproduce some of the things that we've already done. Yeah, well, I kind of want to extract out of this. So instead of doing the sum, we just do... Filter? Yeah, I guess we could filter into a length. Mm -hmm. Well, let's do that first. Uh, you might want to copy the... Original first. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There you go, coward. <laughs> well, All we right. still need the sum, I think. So, uh, I'll on, follow you. Hang on, I'm, re I'm refactoring doing. first. Go ahead and refactor. We do that first, will... right? If this still works, then, then we're good. If I didn't break everything right here, which I may have broken everything. I broke everything. Uh, what did I do? Uh, actually, well, before we do that, make it firm it worked a moment ago. <laughs> we did, we did change a couple of things, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's clearly passing. So what did I do here? Yeah, don't do that. Stop helping. Okay, so when we do this, we're going to say... Turn that to the number value groups, filter it down to the ones where the length equals the quantity, and then say dot length greater than zero. Dot, dot length, not slash length? What is slash length? Okay, there we go. So, still works, but now this code means something else. Mm -hmm. So this is a function right here. Yep. Uh, which we're going to call my fun. <laughs> uh, my fun equals that for now. Let's figure out what we can do with it. So what do we want to do with my fun? And what is it? So right now it's getting the number of the number of collections that are greater than a, the length of zero. So we're getting the count of collections. Um, I don't know what that's going to exactly give us back. Uh, so if it's greater than zero. Oh, wait, I was supposed to have a quantity at that point. Where do I get my quantity from? So, I'm not sure we, I'm following. Let me put that back. Yeah. Uh, can we go to the original real quick? So. Uh, sure. Might be an easier way to extract it. So let's look at what we need to do, and then maybe we can backtrack. So let's copy paste. Um, uh, let's say. Um, so you're saying let's duplicate it and see what we're. So build what we need and then. Uh, yeah, two of a kind. Um, we don't have multiple two, twos of a kind, so we just need cards. Um, and then instead of sum, let's filter. Yep, yep, yep. And then the quantity is going to be two, and then the length. How many of those twos did we get back? Yep. There's going to be three equals. So we're going to get two. Uh, whenever we filter 
on this will get uh, any collections that have an item of two or length of two. So if there's more than one of these pairs, we'll get two of them. And the, if the length is equal to two, that means we got our two. Mm -hmm. So that should work. So I don't know what that's, we could reuse. That's a, that's a has two pair, right? Oh, yep. Good catch. So I'm not sure what we could refactor out because this part here, filter and sum are different. Sure, but you can write the filter the way that I did. So if you write your has of a kind the way that mine does down there. Okay, let's see. Let's, let's do it. Why don't you switch us to the has of a kind? My cat's not very good at typing. <laughs> <laughs> he tried. He pressed a key. Uh, let's see. So if we switch that to that, right, this should still all work, right? And actually, let's use let's use our has to pair. Okay. So I'm I'm actually going to put this down here. We'll we'll make this work and then do a refactoring while it's working, right? Sounds make good. all the tests pass. Continue to have all the tests passing. So two pair should be right above pair. Oh, we did it this way. That's weird. Okay, let's see if all the tests pass. That's all the tests passing, so good. Yay, we did it. We can go home. Well, we can that, push the production. Hey, red green refactor, man. Red green refactor. Oh, you're going to be that guy. And yes, oh, wait, I, that's I, what the show's about. <laughs> I had a uh, semi transparent cat there for a bit. He does that. <clears throat> Cheshire cat and all, you know? So it has two pair, is using that. So now this has two of a kind is very similar. It's mm -hmm. really just the length greater than zero that is the thing, right? Okay. So has two of a kind, if it didn't return back this, um, uh, we could write it as something else. So let me just do this first off. So its name is not going to make sense for a second while I do this refactoring. Uh, that's the only times we called has of a kind, right? It's just those three? Yep. Okay. So let me do that, and then I'm going to remove that from the method. And then we'll rename the method. So we're going to return back the length of that, so it's how many we have instead of... Whoops, did that... Did I miss something? As pair is not a function. Whoops. Uh, I did make it not a function, I think. I think it's correct. Because it no longer returns back a function that way because I put in a length <clears throat> on that and did this. So I can't yeah. I can't do that then. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it doesn't go away as nicely then. Okay. So, so we couldn't refactor that one out is what you're saying? We, we should still be able to refactor it out. We just have to do it differently. Oh, okay. I think the challenge is that we can't do the uh, the cool, like, quantity... Uh, the currying least, breaks. Yes, I don't know how to do that with, with what I'm trying to change. Right? Because we could yeah. do this. If we got rid of those, I think we could get away with it. I guess if I put like, you know, cards back in here, I might be able to do it if we if we still were calling this, right? So, if we if we yank the currying out, then we could then we could get away with that. Uh, there's got to be another good way to The function would take quantity cards. Yeah. Exactly. We'd have to switch to one of those. Uh, do you have another good way to refactor that, Ed, that you can think of? If I not, don't have anything off the top of my head. All right, let's 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 take a look at what it looks like without the currying in it again, then. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so we'll make has pair equal a method that uh, takes in cards again, and it's going to pass in two comma cards, right? 
And we still have our old has of a kind right there. And this will be quantity cards, right? Mm -hmm. And then that, I think, is the um, only change we have to make there. You swapped you swapped the uh, parameters, though. Did I? Oh, wait, no, you didn't. No, sorry. Okay. I was thinking the old version had the parameters. No. I I'm... think it had it this way the whole time. Yeah, you're right, you're right. This is the way you wrote it. I've done I've done this many times. Accusations. In I may be falling back on old memories. Okay, so looks like tests are still passing, even with my little change here. So okay. we've removed the currying. So that makes these definitions a little... What? Yeah, not all those. Just these three definitions here a little more complicated, but not, not crazy. Uh, yeah, and they, like I said, it was nitpicky earlier, just to show what currying is, because we're talking about functional. Yeah. Uh, because in order to make this work a little bit better, uh, if I can rename has of a kind now. Now you can count the number. Now of I can count the number. Kind. So that's still working, <clears throat> so which means that we can now use this in here uh, instead of this. Right? Yeah, I follow. Has of a kind, uh, two comma two. cards. And then now we have two pair. Now that method just needs a rename. And yep, everything's still passing. So now we just need to give this a name. Count uh, of a kind or something I'm like that? I'm going to call it, uh, sure. Uh, uh, yeah, sure, count of a kind. <laughs> I mean, I'm open to other... I can't come up with a better name. I was going to call well, it foo for now. It was a, was a true or false thing. And then now it's a numeric thing. So it was telling us if we had two pair or if or if you no, know, it was returning a number before. So yeah, is it, this this applies just as well. Okay. Yeah. I'm good. Gives us gives uh, us a little bit more reuse out of that, so that we don't have to duplicate so... the 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 uh, the calls to the two num value groups. Now the only thing that's weird about this is because of the way we call it, we're doing a lot of repeat work. So it would be nice if we could save some of that like a caching strategy or something. Yeah, because we're calling the same method with the same sets over and over and over again, yeah. right? Before <laughs> before we get to that, let's let's have a little fun. Okay. We, could, we weren't uh, having fun already? Is that what you're saying? We could, do a, we could do a whole um, performance optimization show probably. <clears throat> uh, I want to show some uh, a trick off really quick. Um, um, because pin to you. There we go. There's a little bit of a pattern going on. Uh, and this may may break some of the ideas that you had. We can always revert it if we don't like it. Uh, let me move distance uh, out of here towards the top. I'm going to kind of collect um, all of Helpers our Helpers with uh, yeah. check it, full checking of a hand. Right. Yeah. So let's, oops, actually deleted it by accident. We'll move that guy up. Try not to break stuff. Don't worry. You'll, you'll do it just fine. Yeah. I do. <laughs> uh, so these are all helpers so far. Uh -huh. Has two pair, has pair, three of a kind, four of a kind. Yep. Those are all good. Yeah. Uh, are you going to put them in a collection? Card. You're you're following me. All right. Yeah. It's almost like you're building a rules engine. You do know that for about a decade, I have been teaching classes where we build these as where we build rules engines as katas, <laughs> and I show people how they can like use katas to train to do specific things. Nice. I don't. I don't know if you know that. I. I no, I didn't know that. I did a workshop at CodeMash where that was the focus of it for eight years. So, <laughs> and I haven't done it in a couple of years. So, uh, so I guess it's been longer than that. But yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty fun. So I love I love this, I, and I know exactly where you're going because it's the <laughs> like this is 100 percent what I do. So I'm we, on board. I, you can't see the IntelliSense on here, right? No, I don't see but, your IntelliSense, but I can type to get it if you want me to show it for someone else. Uh, I'll just type it out here. So what we've got, if you look at all of these functions, is a function that takes cards and returns a bool, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what every single one yep, of these yep. things all the way down the Almost line Almost like those match some kind of interface. It's like a pattern. Yeah. Um, so let's see if this, this is where you are going with it. Maybe you have a better way to do it since you've, um, got, no, I, of, I mean, that is the exact same here. way that I do this same, same thing. So now instead of this, um, this ternary, uh, operator chain mm -hmm. here, 
yep. or return earlies. Say, you know, remember I mentioned early on that the order of operations here is pretty significant? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. We could make this very insignificant. So instead of returning... Well, the order uh, in which like, you define is insignificant, but you then have to give some kind of sort order control. Yes. Some kind of priority to them. So now we can create an array here. Yep. And we can create an object within that array, and we could call this uh, property an evaluation. So we could say eval. Um, and then we could have, uh, I'll set that property in a moment, but we could have another property called rank. And this has some type of hand rank. And then we could say strength. Oops, not straight. Yep, yep, yep. And then strength is some kind of a... Uh... The funny thing is, I would use rank and name, but and I would I would have rank be the be the value, but we already call it that here. So, okay, so we can <laughs> we can say uh, let's say let's start with one here, and we're gonna say lowest rank is the best one, where this is royal flush. Then uh, the lowest would be. So you're gonna you're gonna say higher numbers better. Uh, we can do either way; it doesn't really okay. matter. Doesn't matter to me. So okay. we can call the, we'll call this high card then, since that sounds like that's okay, the way you were going. Call that high card. Um, in, notice we don't have a method for um, high card, right? So we have has this and that, but we don't have high card. Uh, mm -hmm. High card is our default. So. True. Yep. <laughs> exactly. That makes it easy. <laughs> Let um, me just cheat that one. Yep. Uh, we actually. Don't Oops. even need. There might be some linting that might might cause us issues, but oh, uh, sorry. I we could actually line on just you. return. We could actually just return true. Um, yeah. This follows the pattern more closely, though. Uh huh. So we've got that, uh, and then our so next then one could be has pair, has and you can just pair. put it in, and you don't even need to call it like a method. Yeah. And then the name of it is pair, and it's strength two. Now we're getting the actual ranking in correctly, too. Whereas I didn't do that, actually, before. I kind of ignored it. Uh, let me duplicate a few times. Uh, and actually, it's not has pair, it's just pair. Oh, yep. Good catch. Uh, then the next one is... Oops. Has... Uh, what was the next one up? You don't know in poker? It's three of a kind. Has three... Of a kind. Uh, no, it's pair. It's two pair. Three of a kind's better than two pair. Oh, I see it. Never mind. Yeah. Huh. Uh, so this should be straight. I'm actually just gonna put in the string names here real fast, and we can adjust all the strengths and numbers. Straight, flush. Uh, what is this? Full house. Uh, I actually don't remember on that one. Uh, maybe I messed up the ordering. We'll find out. That's a three. Ah, pairing in its craziest. <laughs> Especially since I was just changing the same line as you. <laughs> yeah, and I, Nothing I have will a go habit wrong. of mistyping <laughs> things, too. Oh, I'm missing a T. Yeah, the stray flush. That's a stray flush, specimen. It's a special type of stray flush oh yep you're <laughs> right a, i missed my four of a kind it's a feral feral flush you're right uh so that is eight this is why i didn't put in the numbers till the end because i was like i want to make sure i get them all so two pair two pair three of a kind three of a kind straight straight has flush flush has full house full house has four of a kind four of a kind uh has straight flush and then i'll get the last one on is Royal Flush. Did we do it? I think so. Okay, so now uh, we can leave that straight comma on the end. Uh, I do. In, in the latest version of JavaScript. In the I'm, older I'm versions. I'm really glad. It always pissed me off that I wasn't able to do it in JavaScript. If we wanted to put these out of order. We could just uh, sort it could, at the end. We could tell it to uh, sort. Based on the strength value. Sort those by strength, and then uh, we want to uh, do a find because we want to get the first instance mm -hmm. yep. of 
the rank or the rule, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. that evaluates to true. We can just do eval. And then we and want then to grab the rank turn off back of that. The rank. Yep. And now and we then... don't need any of that stuff down there. Bloop. Uh, right. You know, you know what also works for commenting things out. There we go. <laughs> uh, leaving le leaving it in there for folks that uh, Dude, wanted that's, to that's do what... a little comparison. Uh, we we messed something up. <laughs> uh, let's see. So what is, what is the return value on all those? Uh, we we said high card on all of them. High card is returning on all of them. Um, when I've done this before, I think we do need to pass in cards. We need to pass in cards. Yeah. So on each one of these, if you want to start at the bottom. Wait, hang on. Don't we just wait? Hang on. Don't we just? Uh, Sorry, oh, I guess. Oh, you yeah, we could do it with a closure down there. I could just call it once down here with that. Yep. Yep. There you go. <laughs> Seems easier to just pass it there. Yeah, that should have fixed it. I think. No, nope. I didn't. It still says high card. All right. Well, let's do this then. Hang on. Because uh, we can do this the lame way and just write in, you know. Uh, actually, no, because it we we're gonna have cards. So you're right. Uh, let's do this. Uh, or actually, we gonna we gonna need to call these like functions at the beginning still though. And then you should be able to drop this. Uh, but these need to be functions then, right? Because those aren't functions right now. If we're going to do that. Oh, no, because they'd be Booleans. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so they'd be Booleans, which means that this one shouldn't be a function either. It should just be true. Yeah, there we go. That the problem with true. this is now we've evaluated them all. So we, we evaluated every one of those. We didn't, uh, we didn't escape out. Uh, let's now, see. it will in this case, because we didn't, we didn't make them... Uh, Isn't high card always evaluated first because strength is one and you sort it increasing? Uh, yes, we need to reverse. That's why okay. I was originally suggesting the other way, but yes. Uh, so we could reverse. And maybe that's why it was not working. Certainly with the reverse it works. What about without the reverse? Nope. So yeah, we just needed a reverse. The question then is, do these work without this then? Oh, so that, yeah, that was the issue we had no. early on. Uh, let's let's try throwing it back in the eval and see if that... Oh, yes. Yeah, where I, where I originally tried to just add it into the... So there definitely was a problem, but we could have fixed it the easier way. Yeah, there we go. Try that. Uh, so let me do this. Uh, do, 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 do. Which I guess there was actually a better way because I could have found find replaced and did this with the word rank afterwards and that would have also gotten it. Now let's see if we pass. Uh nope. No. Oh, uh we need to put this one back. Ah, okay. There it was. Yeah. That's what it was. Okay. That was cool. the other thing we didn't do. Yeah. Right, okay, because I was going to say, well, like when we first saw this, I'm like, I should have just been able to pass cards into the email. Why didn't that work? Yeah, that's... I was like, I guess it doesn't want to take those as methods. Okay. There we go. Cool. And I love how we just totally, we're just like, yeah, we're not even going to take that parameter. No, just true. Yep. Uh, so the, nice the nice thing about this is that means that we're not evaluating it. We're not evaluating all of them. Uh, because this should grab just the first one. Find yep. should just get one that works and then bail us out. Yeah, find a short circuit. So uh, what else is nice is we can take these, since we're doing a sort, and we can move these around arbitrarily, uh, which means that this collection here, this uh, array, uh -huh. yeah. uh, which I don't know if you can see me highlight, this could come from anywhere. Yeah, this could, so be, could, this could be built in... up out of a factory that was using data from our database. Or we could say, um, I want to pass in new rules. Someone and... also could decide that in their game, they don't like to pair and they want to get rid of it. Yep. Or maybe we wanted to get hand rank and in your game, you play... Uh, now, we would have to tweak some other stuff in our code here, uh, but maybe they play a seven-card game of poker instead of a five-card game of poker. 
uh, then we could, you know, maybe have some different rules because obviously a seven card game of poker could have, you know, some different hands because you could have a three pair, for example. Yeah, this this array could be outside of our program and be fed by other functions and we could create custom rules. So now we've made it super extensible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the nice thing is that these tend to be like, th this is a concept where these are like business rules at that point. Where you've yeah. got like, yes, these. And and the neat thing that people might not realize as we're talking about like different types of games, uh, you probably don't, you, you, viewer at home, probably don't write games, uh, playing card games for your job. Uh, if you do, don't, don't, uh, you know, don't just do it in JavaScript like this because um, everyone's going to hack your system and you're going to lose <laughs> a lot of money in your online poker game. But... Um, <laughs> But the, the, for everyone else, if you are doing this kind of stuff, first off, I would not put your business logic here in like a client-side JavaScript piece like this because you'll run into problems. But this same concept, maybe you're doing Node, maybe you're doing C Sharp, yes. maybe you're doing something else. This code in the back end on a server does very well uh, for handling these types of things. So maybe you have sets of clients and mm -hmm. maybe like... You know, maybe I've got a whole bunch of clients. Maybe I run an advertising uh, company and I've got like Telerik and all of Telerik's competitors uh, are, you know, my various customers. And maybe with each one, I've arranged for different sets of rules for how we handle their stuff. I can just create this kind of a structure and build up. Oh, OK. So for Telerik, we have, you know, these five rules and we apply those with all their stuff. And, that, and that's how we work with that client. Uh, so those kinds of things. So this type of coding works into everyone's application. Yep. You don't have to and be if, making a playing card game. If you were going to use something like this on a client, validate. <laughs> yeah. Validate, validate, validate. Yes. But, like if you want to do, for example, a game, like a car, a poker game, and you wanted to give the uh, like a UI, like heads up, like when the person orders their cards uh, to, to make a suit or, or make a, um, I don't know what you'd call it, a hand rank. Uh, and they, you know, they order them to where they have two pair and it lights up and says, oh, you have two pair. Like that would be fine, but you'd want to validate on the server. Yeah. Uh, this that. code would be duplicated. It would be in both the server and the client. Yeah. Uh, is there any way, so if I were writing this in C Sharp, Ed, is there any way I could do that in C Sharp in both places instead of having to write JavaScript and C Sharp versions? Oh, maybe I need to try this in Blazor. <laughs> <laughs> but so but seriously that is actually one of the one of the re like i actually hear people often ask the like why are people excited about blazer it's like well for the same reason people were excited about node it's the yeah. i can do the same language on my server and my client and i don't need to switch and so if i write logic that validates on the client i can use the same logic that validates on the server and i don't have to write it twice and that's the problem right now is that if we so we wrote this in javascript if we were doing this in c sharp it's almost the same but we do have to make two copies of it yep um another thing that's nice about blazer and the idea of it is uh they're looking at ways of sending data down the wire that's not json uh so we don't have to serialize and deserialize json all over the place which is uh currently kind of a pain um so you can actually just send binary packets across and say all right i have a person on my server and a person on my client that are both of the same type and just send binary data over and let that thing just work. Mm -hmm. So that that's also helpful. Um, there's, there's a lot of scenarios where it, it's very powerful. Uh, and then Razor Components is super cool. If you're in a connected environment, you, all of your code is on the server and it runs the app remotely, like your web browser is a thin client. And it just passes... Um, the UI changes over a WebSocket. So you can really take advantage of a lot of C-sharp code without duplication. Uh, you don't need to duplicate because there's no client application anymore. So it's an option. It's uh, very interesting, and it depends on what your app needs are. So connectivity, if, it's, if you don't have constant connection, then it's kind of off the books. But Razor components for people that are in like um, uh, a a factory or something where you have wired PCs all over the place uh, seems like a really good candidate for that. Yep. Also, I, I just fixed our ordering there, Ed. Yeah, I was just proving a point. Right, yeah, we I know. Could, we can move those arbitrarily around. Uh, so... <laughs> Is that, was that a uh, fun kata, though? I mean, what, No, what I, I actually setup? really like that kata. I think it's good. Um, the The 
only challenges I have with it is is time. Um, <laughs> is that there's a lot of things, uh, and I would try to find dr- direction because you are one hundred percent correct. Um, without jumping to the group buys, right? Which in C sharp I would immediately have just gone to the group buys and just did my my pair stuff. But if people don't know mm-hmm. that, then the pairs are difficult. So um, I would almost more do it as like a guided thing. So if you could get the display of the tests to have high card and then say either straight or flush be the thing that follows after it, if you could somehow get an ordering to the tests, basically like do them in this order to try and help people to yeah. go through that, that would be the one thing. Uh, because in a lot of in a lot of katas, that's usually the way you try to do it. You're like, I'm going to sort of guide you into a path that's a little easier. And and if you approach the problem, you would think about it. Because usually what you tell people to do is, hey, what's the simple one? High card? High card's easy. And pair seems easy, but you're right. Flush is definitely the next easiest one. Of like, hey, all these are the same suit, right? Yeah, okay, good. It's a flush. Yeah, I have, um, in the C-sharp version, I actually have that. Because that's one I've given at big conferences, like uh, CodeMash. Um, so I actually have that methodology down where you work through the easier ones and build upon, you know, the ones that belong together, like a uh, flush and a straight flush. Um, but uh, the, the JavaScript one is newer and I am doing it as a kind of a, the next iteration of the, the same idea it was like, can I do this in JavaScript? So I don't have quite the work instructions down pat the way I do with the one I've actually given to hundreds of people. <laughs> so this is maybe the second or third time that I've done this with someone else. So yeah, I definitely need to do that. I need to take those, um, the order of operations of completing this and, and get them worked into the, into the test uh, requirements. I'm going to commit that and push it up. And awesome. now that it's committed, uh, which I probably should have just been committing all the time, but I wasn't because uh, I failed, and I apologize for that, everyone. Uh, I want to try this. Uh, I want to try the other group by. Oh, the yeah. one that was just yeah. sent in. I want to like, <laughs> it's here. I want to see, does it work? So let's see. So it grabs item group by. I took out the value selector because we don't need it, really. Um, so it, it just adds complexity. So let's relook at what this does. So it takes in a group of items and a key selector. It, we're reducing based on groups and items. So this is the running collection, which mm-hmm. we're going to grab the key selector to use. To create that. We're spreading out the existing ones with the new one. So that's effectively like a take that array and append on the new item uh, at this spot with, with that one. So it's select all the ones with the same that, that already had that selector and union them with that, put them in. So I think that'll work. Uh, it comes back with a different, like, this is not the the structure of it when we call this group by. Was that the only spot where we called group by? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. Because I abstracted it out. Yeah, yeah. It's really nice when you extract, when, when you get that nice uh, extracted method there. Hang on. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It mutates the running collection. I, I know, uh, Aaron, it's not it's not like the most efficient thing, but it's cool <laughs> if it works. Uh, I think you deleted the seed of the array at the end. Oh, I might have. I might have. Oh, uh, okay. You're right. You're right. Uh, I think they are correct. Um, uh, so hang on. So I actually do this in C Sharp. Um, you can do group by which um, is the way that most people would and probably should approach it. Uh, but I actually show something similar to this in C Sharp, uh, where you use, um, you could use a, um, what do they call it in JavaScript? We, we did it in, let me find the line of code. This is very similar to something else here. Um, Am I agreeing to you? Or I you? don't know. I'm trying to find my window. Uh, don't know if you're anchored to me or not. So, uh, where we did sets to find out if they're unique, um, you could also use something similar to that, which I think this is kind of on the surface doing as well, where we're building a, like a key value pair up. And as we iterate, we count, um, how many of those values we find. 
Yeah, so uh, we could do it. Uh, we so writing the this the naive approach. You mean the same as we did with our reduce, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we could do the same thing, and then you're just basically looping over and inserting in at the position that you want. Yep. Yeah. So I I, I showed something similar to this in my uh, C sharp workshop um, on the same problem, and it's just to show different approaches to these type of things. And uh, there's really an interesting one called the concurrent con concurrent dictionary, I believe. I'm trying to remember this off the top of my head. But concurrent dictionary, um, it's a thread safe collection. And on a normal collection in, in C sharp, if you try to add the same key or the uh, normal dictionary, if you try to add the same uh, entry twice, it throws an error that the, uh, the item already exists, right? Mm -hmm. Well, with the concurrent dictionary, there's a function that is called that has an um, insert or update or add or update method. So instead of just calling add and having it blow up, this concurrent dictionary is meant for multi-threading. So you can say add or update, and then you can say, well, if I already have this, instead of throwing an error, just add a uh, count to it. So you can just walk through and count the number of a certain um, card that's in there. So there, there's a lot of different approaches to it. Yeah, and you so can use that same one in JavaScript. Hilariously, this is very similar to the the greed game, Kata, in that sense. I don't know if you know greed. I, I haven't seen that one. Okay, greed is is a very similar. It's a dice game. Uh, so instead of having different cards. You roll dice, and the dice have a number of pip. You know, when you roll a six-sided die, you you know it might come up with like one pip, two pip, three pips, four pips, five pips, or six pips, right? And <laughs> so uh, it also does the same kind of thing, where like you might have a pair, or you might have a three of a kind, or a straight, or a flush. So like not a flush, but a, a straight, right? You might have you might, like these same concepts exist in that game, and they have different values that they're worth, right? And so it's the same kind of thing. So within your hand, you might have, like within your, your dice roll, you might have uh, a pair of a kind, a, a pair and a three of a kind, right? Uh, and so, you know, that's like a full house kind of rule. And so this same, this same game sort of works. So, yep, dice games. You can do the same thing with dice games as you can with card games. <laughs> I've, I've done this in Ruby as well. It's a fun project to work on it teaches I, I knew nothing about ruby i just went in and did this to learn it uh, so it's a fun way to kind of pick up a new language yeah so uh that's one of the other cool things for katas is that they're great for learning new languages because you can do a domain that you already know uh i like that will is talking about uh how he does an add or update extension method to his dictionaries uh in c sharp <laughs> because it is one of those like it's like yeah it's kind of annoying you're like okay I want to I want to insert this in or 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 at you know like either change this value or uh, which in that you can usually just say hey you know index by the key and put that on there but so if you don't mind I'm, I want to share something uh, that people can pick up if they're interested it's a free resource uh, so I'm going to share. <laughs> So, in, uh, sounds good. In a, post a in link a, in our, chat. Oh, I'm okay, gonna paste. Okay. I'm gonna show you a link first in uh, Skype, um, okay. if you don't mind opening that PDF file, um, oh, and I'll share oh. in chat how they can get that PDF file. So I'm opening so, up a PDF file. Because if I send you the link that I have for chat, you'll have to um, fill out um, some information to get the download. Uh, so it's it's behind a gate, unfortunately. But um, I will share the link in chat. It's actually in this repo as well. Uh, but I have this cheat sheet that I put together um, as part of... Uh, Which is this one. Yep. So this is a thing that I wrote for Progress or Telerik. And um, it's uh, a nice cheat sheet on all of the functional um, things that we went over. Uh, like how to use filter, map, reduce, um, ex expressions instead of statements, so the tenery operator. Um, there's an expl explanation of higher order function, which is actually pretty simple. It's just a function that takes another function as a parameter or returns another function. 
the currying example is in there. There's a lot of great examples in all of the examples open to uh, stack blitz. So you can tinker around with those. Uh, so if anybody wants that resource, I'll paste that in the chat room. It's also in the stack blitz repo uh, that is up there that we worked on today. It's under the readme. So uh, I don't know if you're pinned to me, but I just jumped to that. Uh, and I'll, I'll paste this in the chat for folks. Oh yeah, I see it there. Uh, I love Will's comment because uh, he, he keeps comparing your beard to uh, Guy's beard. <laughs> oh, my my beard is nowhere near impressive. I just shaved it like a month ago, so it's back to normal. Uh, so that, that one's in there. Um, and there's also some articles noted in that readme as well that I wrote uh, that show even more examples of how uh, how to do this type of stuff. So if you're like newer to JavaScript or newer to the functional aspects of it, then those things can be a really big help. Um, the cheat sheet is awesome for like printing out and like pinning to your cubicle wall or whatever. So if you're like, you can't remember which, um, which function to use, like filter, map, reduce, whatever, you always grab that and look at examples. And if anyone wants to try this kata that we just did, I just linked to it again in the chat. Mm -hmm. So you can go there and you can, uh, Go ahead and follow along. This it'll literally put you in the place where we were writing the code, so you can just go here and start doing that now. Like you can just type away right in this page. Yep. So you don't works. have to be like a Webpack expert or a Live Reload like React yep. programmer. You can just go in there and just hack away. It's just JavaScript at that point. Yep. Which and is really they're cool. All, they're all free resources that uh, that uh, Progress let me put out. So enjoy those. Share those. I hope you learned something from them. Hope so too. Should be good. Cool. Um, uh, am I correct? I seem to remember reading somewhere that Lambda functions and JS are attached to each instance and regular functions are just to the class. Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I believe that is correct. Um, if you... so. Uh, there is a different way of declaring things if you want to attach something to the class itself as opposed to putting it on the instance. Uh, the way that we wrote it here, it is going to be on, uh, it would be like instance versions. Uh, but mm -hmm. in this case, we were just like putting them right in, in global, right? <laughs> it's, you know, yeah. We were not like actually structuring this the way you normally would uh, inside, of a, inside of an object. But yes, you are correct. A class in C in in, uh, in JavaScript in ES6 uh, is going a any functions you put on there are going to be on the instance yeah these uh, are just statically defined anywhere you import scoring.js would have them available globally um, so yes uh, the keep in mind though, that a regular function you put on a class is also going to be uh, instance-based un unless you uh, actually define it differently. So if you, if you do like a function object and you just put a function on it, it is on the instance, not on the, not on the type. So it's, it's that way for, for a lot of things. So in JavaScript, there's a lot of understanding about how the function's actually getting created. We could talk about the different circumstances of that. But yes, uh, there are costs to all of those things. So anyway, um, I actually think this is probably a pretty good uh, wrapping point then. Uh, sound, sound good to you uh, as yeah, well? Yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, like, like I mentioned earlier, I think you could probably spend an entire show trying to do like caching strategies and figure out how to best make this performant. But I think that's beyond the scope of what the kata is supposed to teach. So I, I, I think would agree. you're right. This is a good wrap up point. <laughs> you, you, uh, awesome. I'm, I'm glad people enjoyed the stream. Uh, and, uh, th thank you for the uh, comment there, uh, will that, uh, that we can have Ed back on the show. Ed, it, uh, it was great having you here. Uh, I want to thank you for, uh, stopping by and, and bringing a, a kata. I thought it was a lot of fun. Thank you. Um, just sharing in chat here too, that if you're interested in blazer, you should uh, show check up out to my, your show on Friday. My show is on Friday. I get, this to decide what I'm talking about this week because uh, I scour the web for like the latest news bits and things on Blazor and talk about those things. So it's kind of a off the hip um, 
uh, whatever happened this week type of show. So we'll we'll figure that out on Friday. You should you you, you like the link that I put in chat? Notice it's even got the casing right <laughs> on your name. Yeah, you did a better <laughs> job than I did. That's because I wrote a bot that does that for me, so I don't have to be like, oh, how do I let me type out the URL <laughs> for this? Uh, so okay, awesome. Uh, I am gonna roll some credits then. And uh, I want to thank everybody for showing up today. And uh, I think it was uh, quite fun. So thank you for all your comments, suggestions, everything like that. Thanks to any everybody that followed today. Uh, let me go ahead and roll some credits here. And then we can take off. Uh, so uh, thank you, uh, me and Ed and Stoolpenner. And I know I saw SNB and some other people here today. Uh, thank you to these nice followers who followed today. And uh, Kevin and Dot Kami for those, uh, <laughs> for those subs and resubs. And uh, Crimson Green, uh, hey, welcome. And uh, yeah, thanks for being here the whole time, just showing up at the end. And uh, <laughs> if anyone is interested, other other relevant links people might care about. Uh, if you want to chat with me or any of the other viewers of Dev Chatter, the great place to do that is to check out our Discord. It is a chat application where you can chat with us. Uh, I'm still trying to convince Ed that he should uh, join that as well. Uh, thanks, I'm glad you enjoyed the show. Uh, be sure to click the follow button here as well as over on Ed's stream, uh, linked below. And I think you can follow him on Twitter with, again, the name that's under his name up there. And uh, yep. if you want to follow me, I'm on Twitter as well. I'm at Brandonius. Uh, again, links in chat for all this stuff. And video, if you missed any part of this, this is all recorded. It's in the video section here on Twitch. And it will eventually be on YouTube as well, although I delay putting those over there. They're primarily over here on Twitch, and it will be up on YouTube eventually. If you're on YouTube, hello, future person. Uh, <laughs> I hope it's nice in the future. So, awesome. I will see you all uh, tomorrow. Oh, I should make sure I tell everybody about tomorrow's show. It's going to be a really cool one. I have another guest tomorrow. Uh, John Skeet is going to join us tomorrow, and we're going to be doing some uh, web programming with... Uh, some interesting stuff with time zones and dates. We're going to do some scheduling stuff. I think Ed's actually going to really like what we, we are building. Uh, I think he'll find it useful, the the, uh, the web app that uh, that John and I are going to work on tomorrow. So uh, hit, we'll, 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 we'll be replacing. And uh, Will, you can compare John Skeet's beard to Ed's beard if you like. I don't it's, think uh, John has a beard. Right I, don't, well, I don't think John <laughs> has a beard. So, so I think you'll win that contest. Uh, we, we won't have a contest over stack overflow points though. And, and the best part is, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but, um, every, the, the people in the chat that were commenting about the beard stuff, uh, the hilarity being, I, I shaved my beard off, uh, literally the week before I started streaming. So it disappeared right before I started streaming. Goodbye beard. <laughs> don't, don't stream with a beard and, uh, welcome leak camp. Thanks for that follow. <laughs> All right. Uh, a hey, shockers. Uh, thanks for hanging out, everyone, and I will see you all next time.